everyone, and welcome to The WAN Show. We've got a great show lined up for you this week. At least we hope we do. You might have noticed that we are also live on the channel with our 24-7 LTT TV stream. I have no idea how those two streams are going to interact with each other. YouTube assures us that it's fine to have two live streams going from the same channel at the same time. Um, we currently do. I what, just loaded it up. What There's I suspect is that basically nobody is going to watch WAN Show and they're going to be like, WTF, what the heck happened to WAN Show? And we're going to be like, this happened to WAN Show. <laughs> Got a lot of great topics for you guys today. The big ones are, of course, Threads launching. This is a new Twitter alike from Meta, parent company of Facebook and Instagram. And uh, <clears throat> Elon Musk was salty. He was a salty baby. Ooh, but that's not really what we think is the biggest news. Google has been accused of misleading advertisers, which when your entire business is advertising, basically amounts to your business being like kind of fraudy. Allegedly, allegedly. So um, these are serious accusations. We're going to be digging into them a little bit later. What else we got today? Uh, we have tons of great topics. Uh, Seriously, you're not the one you submitted <laughs> that has an entire page of notes. You're not going to go with that. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, sure. Why not? Uh, the CEO of a alleged rug pull game is suing Goat Moth, a creator that we've mentioned a couple times on Wan Show in the past for his uh, exposés of cheating in Tarkov. So that'll be a little spicy. We'll talk about that in the moment. And the next one, I can't decide between the end of Giphy cat and the fact that apparently emojis can quite literally be legally binding you picked those over evga yep. potentially going out of business it's a potential allegedly maybe 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 that's true yeah <laughs> The show is brought to you today by Blackpoint Cyber, Squarespace, and Signal Wire. Okay. Right into threads or right into Google? Ooh. I think you can actually just choose this time. Yeah. Because the title was kind of both. Yeah. Which one do you want to do? Uh, you said you had a lot to say about threads. I, d I just have some claims to make. Okay. You know some, what? Some gotchas. No, I want to do Google accused of misleading right advertisers. Yeah. Google has been accused of misleading advertisers about their true view in stream ads. And this is according to advertising research firm Adlytics. Adlytics, excuse me. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, true view ads can be skipped after five seconds and advertisers, hence the name true view, right? It's supposed to be an actual view. Advertisers are only supposed to be charged for them if the consumer watches 30 seconds of the ad, or if it's shorter than that, the entire ad with audio playing. The ads are supposed to be in stream, which means they play before, during, or after video content. Now, when you think of Google services that have video content, what's the first thing that comes to mind? YouTube. I thought you were going to go with something snarky, like like duo video calling or Neat. something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, YouTube. But analytics found that 42 to 75% of TrueView ad spend was allocated to ads that did not uh, meet Google's claimed standards. The firm reviewed the ad campaigns of over a thousand brands across the internet and found that many of the TrueView ads were run not only in small video players that are, were just in the corner or the side of the screen, some of which were fully muted, but in some cases on sites that contained content that would violate you, Google's terms of service. Um, this is a huge deal because have you ever bought online advertising before? Technically, yes. It was a very long time ago, but yes. There is a high degree of trust associated yes, with it. Absolutely. I don't know if you guys have done this before, but I've done it a couple of times. And basically what you do is you kind of 
pick what you want. Uh, the, the most recent time I did it was on Facebook, but I'm sure the process is relatively similar. Yeah. Uh, you you kind of pick what you want to target. You choose what you want it to say and obviously like where you want it to direct to if anybody clicks on it. And then you set a budget. And it's basically on them to decide algorithmically, yeah, right? Spend it. Where, where to spend the budget. And in some cases, you don't even set an exact budget. So sometimes they will spend less or they'll spend more. And there's just the expectation that you're going to trust that they're going to spend it in a way that is algorithmically optimal because, well, otherwise, I guess you could take your business elsewhere. Except that, you know, online advertising is essentially what a, a duopoly at this point. Is there another major player outside of Meta and Google? Uh, nowhere near the same scale. Functionally, functionally, not really. Yeah. And so if Google is saying, hey, this is going to be played on content that is verified brand safe on sites that are controlled by us, like when they say TrueView ad, I had never even heard of those running anywhere other than on yeah, YouTube. You have high expectations. But you know what's funny is as soon as I saw the article about this, as soon as I saw the report, I went, yeah, I have seen the five second countdown on other click sites. to skip on other sites. You saw an ad. I had always just, I don't know what the ad was for. <laughs> but you just I saw the skip button. <laughs> I saw a skip button for an ad. Fair enough. Um, but I always just kind of assumed that it was someone cloning Google's interface because that happens all the time. Yeah. Yep. Where you'll see something that looks like a reCAPTCHA, but it isn't. Or you'll see something that looks the, like, you know, ad choices or whatever, but it is something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the research and, and 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 to defend that assumption, there yeah. are players that have done that for advertisements that are not Google Ads. Right. They have the five second skip. It's in the same spot. The box looks almost identical, and I guarantee you, it's not a TrueView ad. So, like that was a decent assumption. The research also identified ads in which the skip button was hidden or obscured to make it difficult for users to skip after five seconds, which means Google was basically just like, I mean, if this is true, Google was fraudulently charging their advertisers for ads that were supposed to be seen by a pair of human eyeballs but probably never were. Which you might not actually necessarily care about. But if this goes through legal action, and it's true that 70, up to 75% of these were screwed, that might impact YouTube or uh, Google in like an actually very significant way. Um, which, you know, they have coming if this is, if this is true. Yeah. But um, man, this... This raises some serious questions about the viability of Google's platforms. Like, if this is what they have to do to make money, I'm sitting here going, "Is YouTube even is is YouTube even less sustainable than I thought it was?" Because I, I I kind of I I don't, I don't know, man. Like, just looking at the sheer volume, not just of of viewers on YouTube, but but ad consumption on YouTube. Like, it's kind of it's I unfathomable. It's, I wonder if it's actually almost reverse. Really? Sorry. Because if you put these ads on these random websites where they're like yeah. out of the corner and then you're selling like the effectiveness of these ads yeah. versus YouTube ads, I feel like they would be more effective when they're on YouTube. Well, that's true. But so I feel like they're taking more volume. But the effectiveness is probably going down, probably comes out in the wash as a positive for them. But YouTube might actually do better if you're able to buy an ad that was specifically only on YouTube. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So then they have less inventory, but theoretically they can charge more of Higher a premium quality. for it because it will drive better conversion. So that's screwing you over. Um, no, because it actually benefits me directly if CPMs are higher on YouTube. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Oh. By doing hey, this yeah. model, yeah. Hey, yeah, we're... <laughs> By doing the volume decreased value model, yeah. by using a bunch of junk sites to pump the volume. Hey, where's my piece of this? You're getting screwed. And by extension, everyone else in this building. Yeah. That's, that's, that's Linus that's Media Group Incorporated's revenue yeah, there. Yeah, hold on. Hold on a second, Google. It gets worse. 
other ads were reported appearing in Android apps that were not even available in the Google Play Store, <laughs> including from developers based in countries that are sanctioned by the U.S. government, such as Iran. By the way, small update seems to at least somewhat be working. There's currently 6.4 thousand on YouTube watching WAN. Okay, so I guess two live streams um, double the fun. Yeah, cool. I don't know. That thirty percent more fun. There is notably less people watching the 24/7 stream. (laughs) Okay, well that's fine. Yeah, Uh, they don't need to watch that. Um, Now, Google is not just going to take this lying down. Yeah. Google's director of global video solutions, Mark. Um, or excuse me, Mark. Marvin Renaud wrote that the report's findings are, and this is in quotes, extremely inaccurate, that advertisers are only charged for ads when they are viewed, and that the majority of ads are served on YouTube, not on third-party sites. He likewise said that Google monitors adherence to its policies and last year stopped serving ads on over 143,000 websites that were found to be in violation. Renaud's blog post also claims that Google allows advertisers to opt out of running ads on third-party sites at any time. However, this is actually contradicted by Google's support page that reads, As of September 30th, 2021, new video action campaigns that you create in Google Ads use Google Video Partners automatically. So you are getting screwed. I mean... What's uh, what's really interesting is this isn't in our notes, but it was in one of the articles that I read about this. Apparently, since 2016, there's been less transparency in terms of like something to do with the way that your campaign runs. I don't want to say anything uh, because I don't will get the exact details no. wrong because yeah. this is just based on memory for an article I read like three or four hours ago. But um, man. I uh, I will be keeping an extremely, extremely close eye on this over the next little bit because this is kind of a bombshell. Like, we're yeah. not just talking about millions of dollars or tens of millions of dollars. We could be talking about billions of dollars. I also saw a list of the, uh, of the brands that were allegedly affected by this. Uh, let me see if The Verge has the original Adlytic. Yeah, here it is. Uh, so here's the original article from Adalytics, uh, but YouTube channel Valid True View, uh, web page Valid True View, uh, Invalid True View. Whoops. Uh, here's an American Express. So they've actually got so like they've got receipts. Yeah. American Express YouTube True View ad serving on a third party website. What the heck is the news lens? I've never heard of this before. Uh, video player is muted by default. Video ads autoplay without consumer initiation. Uh, here's another one. Uh, JP Morgan Chase YouTube TrueView ad. Just like casually sitting here on whatever the site is. Uh, multiple kayak YouTube TrueView ads playing in different I wonder how ad much slots. of this is like text-based websites abusing how the like player works and stuff like that to try to like trick it into giving them more ads because that is we've seen that strategy for years Mm, that's possible so google might need to step up like they're like oh we we blocked one hundred and forty three thousand websites like maybe you should do more so like that website sounds like a lot in a vacuum or sorry that amount of website sounds like a lot in a vacuum but it might not actually be that much man um yeah so it's not like they're just coming out of nowhere saying this, but Google says it's not true. I Of course they do though. Like I will be very interested. Well, okay, fine. Do you want to jump into our our next topic then? Sure. Allegedly, this is according to a recent forum post from Korean overclocker SafeDisk, the entire EVGA motherboard uh. team in Taiwan has resigned, which could force the company to leave the motherboard market. However, this is very contested. In fact, I personally reached out to EVGA, and uh, you can go ahead and read the response for the good people here. Just the big one at the bottom? Yeah. All rumor, Kingpin still with EVGA, still focused on other product lines, and Taiwan office still open, here to support our customers. Now, what's curious is that while there has been some speculation that the that that the the Taiwan office is closing and that or that Kingpin is leaving EVGA, and this is based on an offhand remark he made in an interview with Gamers Nexus, where he basically was asked, "What's your next big project?" and he said nothing. Yeah. Um, 
The one thing that EVGA's message doesn't contest is the motherboard team. Yes. And if Kingpin said, I don't have any other projects, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's leaving. So all he said is uh, Vince is still there. But that doesn't necessarily mean he has any projects with the motherboard team if they're gone. So He let's might have also interpreted it as like, what is your next project within this team? Because if I remember correctly, he like looks at the other guy and says nothing. Or so I don't remember. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't have it right in front of me. I don't know, but um, yeah. Workers at EVGA Spain told Tech Power Up that it was business as usual at their branch, and EVGA has denied accounts of mass resignations and leaving the motherboard market to both Tech Power Up. Oh, and apparently to us as well. So this didn't contain a denial of that, but maybe to someone else here. Part of what made these rumors seem plausible, though, is that it's only been a year since EVGA announced it was leaving the GPU market, and some forum users have noted that the company's Supernova XC power supplies come with only a three-year warranty, which is two to seven years shorter than what is yeah. usual for EVGA. Dun, dun, dun. Um, I also noticed, completely independent of this, that EVGA's site has basically nothing in stock. Interesting. And the reason for this is that we have an upcoming budget power supply roundup. I know, right? We're doing a budget power supply roundup. Can you believe it? The power supply tester is up and running. Hey. Yeah. So anyway, um, the winner was an EVGA power supply. We'll, we'll get that video out to you guys as soon as it's through the editing pipeline. But what I realized was that it wasn't available anywhere. So in the time between a few weeks ago us buying it and testing it and sitting down to review the script with Alex, it had completely disappeared from the internet. It wasn't available at any of the major retailers we would expect to find it at. And it wasn't even listed on EVGA's website. I then started going through EVGA's site, which it looks like you're doing. Uh, don't look at GPUs though, they're out of that market. Just power supplies. I started going through EVGA's site and what I realized was they don't have a single power supply in stock. Seriously, click on anything. Wow. So I called them because I was like, hey, this is going to be pretty embarrassing if we, you know, do a, it's a small roundup. The process is very manual right now that we tested five power supplies, only three of which were actually really budget because all we wanted was a good recommendation. And we basically stopped as soon as we got there because it is inordinately time consuming and there's a lot for us to figure out in our workflow uh, which we will but this was just a good test run basically so the only things they have in stock on their website are b stock there is b stock but so, it's only b stock so it would be pretty embarrassing if the winner of our roundup of three items didn't exist anymore so i called up evg and i went hey, hey, hey um what's going on do you still pick uh do you still make budget power supplies? Also, like, are you going to have any stock? What, what's the deal here? And I was assured that there is inventory incoming and that, like, it will, it will, it might be a little while after the video comes out before you can actually buy one, but there are more coming and you will be able to buy one. Hmm. Um, so I had already had some questions about what was going on over at EVGA because even if they do have more power supplies coming, that doesn't mean necessarily that things are going great if there's nothing in stock on their site. Yeah, no motherboards, outside of B-Stock, no motherboards and no power supplies in stock at all is a little fishy. With that said, there were some power supplies in stock at third parties. And my understanding is that EVGA stocks the third their site before retailer sites. Oh, wait, do you mean the other way around? Excuse me, I mean the other way around. Okay. They stock partner sites before their own site. But I am... Uh, I don't consider this matter to be entirely resolved, is yeah. what I will say about all of this. Yeah, a little sketchy. Yeah. Hey, you can also buy a lanyard. They have those. At EVG. Uh, okay. Thank you, Luke. That is- Very cool. Very helpful. And a mouse badge. <laughs> I mean, don't forget about the case badge. The metal case badge for a dollar? That's not too uh, bad. Yeah, as long as you don't want to buy more than 15. <laughs> Start melting them down. That would be so. a problem. <laughs> Hold on, guys. We've only got like three things left in stock. 15 per person maximum. We don't want to completely run out. That would be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Why don't we Speaking jump? Speaking of embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, threads. Yeah. Threads has been launched. Meta's new Twitter competitor, Threads, has reportedly accumulated over 30 million users within its first 24 hours. The app is not entirely polished and lacks support for both emojis uh, and hashtags. Quick update to that number. It's apparently over 78 million now. <laughs> Cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, there is no dedicated chronological following feed, though one is planned. I'm sure hashtags and emojis will be as well. Uh, the app requires an Instagram account to join and offers new users the option to follow everyone they already follow on Instagram. There is currently no method of deleting the Threads account without also deleting the attached Instagram account, though they can be independently deactivated. Whatever that means. I Yeah, I don't fully know. I think it means your data is not gone but like, you can't log into it anymore? I don't know. Okay. Um, this may violate a con consent decree placed by Meta by the FCC because it misleads the user about the degree to which they can control their own data. All right, some of this stuff's getting into the weeds a little bit. Can, yes. we, just, can we just sort of generally talk about how for a sec? utterly remarkable it is that Elon Musk has gone from being the technology industry's poster boy for how to be like a, an awesome, you know, billionaire innovator to being so hated that people are actually cheering for Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, yeah, in multiple ways. Because in like, they also want him to fight. In like two years. That's yeah. how long, that's how long... That fall from grace. Took. I just want to say, I've been pointing out for a long time, I don't think it would be that hard to make a Twitter competitor. And people <laughs> keep on telling me that I'm nuts. They've only been working on this since like January. They have over 70 million users. I mean, I think it was kind of a really smart move. Like, I'm annoyed. I don't have a Threads account because I actually do not have an Instagram account. Oh. Because I just, I, I had the, the work one. And I used that as my yeah. Instagram oh, account. Oh, yeah, yeah. So and when then, you did your split thing back in the day, you just didn't make an Instagram account? I just didn't bother making an Instagram account because I'm sitting here going, well, what is Instagram? Yeah. It's Twitter. I think I uploaded a picture to Instagram like three years ago, and it was just a, I was on a hike, and it was just a picture of the burrito that I was eating while I was on the hike. That's yeah, it. that that should have been a tweet for sure. That's actual <laughs> garbage content. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so, so I just, I didn't really understand the point of Instagram and like, uh, our, our former cinematographer, Brandon tried to explain it to me. He was like, it's, it's like better. And I yeah, was like, I just what does that even mean? He's like, care. like when you're scrolling, it's better. And I'm like, I, I I'm sorry. I actually have, no, I, I actually have no capacity <laughs> to understand what you're talking about right now. And I'm not going to scroll either of them. So it doesn't really matter. Um, so, so anyway, I don't have an Instagram account. And I just, it was like, it took longer than like three seconds to, uh, you know, I would have had to log into my password manager in order to, you know, validate my login with Facebook or something, something. And I was just like, ah, forget it. But to their credit, I think it was kind of genius to tie the branding and everything into Instagram instead of... Gives you more confidence? Instead of calling it Threads by Facebook or something like that. Oh, yeah. No, because, definitely. Because the brand cachet of Instagram is obviously, you know, way better than Boomer Facebook or yes. whatever. And what's kind of interesting about this is I feel like what they're doing is they are acknowledging um, indirectly that every social media platform kind of has a, a cycle. I think they've just accepted at this point, and this is something I didn't really catch on to when they rebranded to Meta. I think they have accepted at this point that the Facebook brand is basically like just f***ing done. Yeah. It's, it's annihilated. There's nothing left of it. So they are slowly but surely just kind of going, okay, well... I don't know, use it for marketplace or whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll happily take your data about what you're selling and buying in the second hand or whatever. And if, you know, people want to post pictures of their 
you know, family outing or whatever on Facebook and they can like it or whatever. Sure, fine, go do that. But we understand everything's moving to Instagram and we understand Instagram ain't going to be around forever either. And so by migrating, you know, remember the, the Instagram branding changed to like Instagram by Facebook for a long time there. Build, 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 build. Okay, uh, this, is, this is threads by Instagram. And then they, they migrate a bunch of people who are interested in changing. Like that's the thing is I'm getting to be all boomery. Like I don't, I, I just, why do I, why do I still use Twitter at all? Honestly, just like out of habit. Yeah. Whereas it tends to be people who have a little bit more time, a little bit more elasticity left in their brains that are just going to try to jump onto something new just for the sake of trying it. So they jump onto threads. It's going to naturally have a younger, more vibrant user base. And eventually Instagram will turn into like, for you know millennials or you know geriatric gen z's or whatever and this is going to be the this is going to be the new meta haha uh-huh. very good um i, I like I, I get it i get it now and it's like kind of genius um i'm surprised it worked this well it's a lot of self-awareness yeah it's um i i think when i i jumped on it because why not i was interested i wanted to mostly just reserve my username i haven't thre- threaded anything yeah, that's terrible. I've never actually said that out loud before. That sounds horrible. Sounds uh, like hair removal. Yeah. Uh, I haven't threaded anything yet, but uh, the, the the follow everyone you follow on Instagram thing was smart because yep. it, it immediately makes your, your threads experience feel vibrant because a bunch of these people that you probably follow on Instagram are already on there. So instead of like, oh, I'm going to follow the like few people that I don't care about that Twitter makes me follow when I sign up. Um, it's like, oh, these are people that I already know. And hey, look, they're already on threads. There's actually stuff happening here. One of the big problems that I think a lot of the other like Twitter clones that have popped up have is that it just feels dead when you show up. Yeah. I also noticed at least when I started using it, I don't know if this has changed or not yet because it sounds like a, a decent amount has already literally changed, but they were hiding certain metrics which probably made sense in the first like few hours. Now that they have 70 million users, maybe they need to start making that stuff more more public. But you couldn't see like how many people liked something. But you could see the people responding to it and stuff, which if people are responding to things, which they're likely to do on a new platform because they're actively trying to use the new platform, it's going to make it feel a little bit more active than it might actually be. And I think that was a good way to get people into like, yeah, no, this is real. This is real. Things are happening. This is okay. This is good. Uh, yeah. Apparently, Mr. Beast has more followers on there than, than Zuckerberg. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Does that surprise you? No, but it's just funny. I mean, the, the Zuck is just sort of like, oh, man. I, I, you you kind of reluctantly, like, you have to pay attention to him. I mean, it really, realistically, I mean, it's no different than Musk. It's no different than Bezos. Like, it's not like... No, Musk is just like more public than all the rest of them. No offense to any of them. I, I actually, I, I don't, I, I don't need to have dinner with them. Like I just, yeah, <laughs> you know, but I do, I work in the tech industry. I do have to kind of pay attention to what the crap it is they're doing this time. Yeah. Um, Mr. Beast is doing a Tesla giveaway on threads. Are you sure that's not a bot? Yeah, no, he is. Oh, wow. Because he's like, yeah, whatever, it's Jimmy, right? Like he he's does, just memeing. Yeah, he just does things. Apparently, we have a, a thread something. I wanted to, I yeah, wanted to look official. at it. Yeah, it's not official. Yeah, it is. It is now? I, well, I don't know. What does official mean? Apparently, we didn't have an official account on Instagram. Oh, uh, you mean like a verified account? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh, okay. So I, they're working on it, I guess. Okay. We should have official accounts, uh, except for when you have to pay for them, and then we shouldn't have official do I even, Okay, I do have Instagram on my phone. Uh, okay, I can log in another. Ca- oh God, I don't even. I don't even know the password. What are you even trying okay, to do? Is, I want. I want to see our thread. <laughs> I haven't even seen it yet. Hold on. Oh, you have. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, you have it. Okay, cool. I I get to see. I get to see our threads presence. The social team was telling me that apparently interaction is pretty similar on threads to the other Mostly major platforms surprised. right now. Yeah. Just just because everyone's it's the new hotness, right? So people are just checking it out. Oh, hey, they have one of the tweets I. <clears throat> threads that i suggested today um someone pointed out i have barely used the app but someone pointed out that when you go to sharing you can tweet threads 
Oh, really? Which looks really weird because now there's like a tweet button in threads, which is like... Whew. That blows my mind. What's um, happening right now? Okay. What is, people are asking, what is threads? Threads really? is... Oh. Instagram or Meta's or Facebook's whatever response to Twitter effectively. It is their version of Twitter. Yeah, they've been working on it since January and now it's released. That's how you know something was really, really hard. Well, apparently my idea did not perform very well. Get on. Um, liked by was it? the Brad Fad and others. And then the one under it is, uh, oh, no, okay, apparently some of them just... See, like, some of the metrics are, like, not... Oh, weird. Yeah. View likes, something, something. But then you have to, like, what? scroll it's through all of it. It doesn't, it doesn't show you the number. The thing. Yeah. Like, it's, it's oddly obscured, oh, which I, I feel like my gut is telling me was a, was a choice for the initial launch so that it wasn't the focus. Right. Okay. Yep, I, uh, I I have no idea. And anything I can only access on my phone just doesn't exist to me. Yeah, there's no website! <laughs> what the heck? I remember people telling uh. me when, when TikTok was popping off. I remember people telling me how... Actually, for that matter, when Instagram was popping off. I remember people telling me how amazing it was. And I would go to Instagram.com and it would just read... The desktop experience is terrible. It, no, I'm talking before that. Oh. When, it just re, when it was just a link to the App Store. And I was like, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I, I'm just... I, <laughs> Re realistically, like most of what you're doing is probably like web-based anyway. Just put it on the... Put it in a stupid vertical window. I don't care. I feel like how much web browsing yeah. I do in a browser on a desktop is probably the like boomerist thing about me. Yeah. I just I, I just I want the website to be the best version. But for a lot of the like hip young, you know, apps and experiences and products and whatever, they're like isn't even a website or like you were just talking about it's just a link to the app store or it's an afterthought like Instagram's currently is or something like that. It's just like, oh man. Like, uh, oh well. Websites work better. I mean, sure, when they do, they don't for everyone. Yep. Yep, know. that's fair. Man, I, uh, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's take bets here. Mm. Who emerges here? Because Blue Sky hasn't gone away. Nope. They're, they just seem to be still ramping I infrastructure. I don't think it's going to be Blue Sky, personally. Yeah, okay. That's fair enough, but... I think Threads will beat Blue Sky. I uh, feel like right now I would be making a complete up-in-the-air guess based on nothing to say whether it would be Twitter or Threads. Really? Yeah. You think Twitter has a chance? I do. I, I do. I would absolutely not at all be surprised if Threads just completely took their lunch either. Like I'm not. I'm yeah. not. I'm not really in any camp here. I have experienced a significantly degraded experience on Twitter over time. Like yeah, but over the Threads last while. is currently like very lacking in features. And That's stuff. fair. But look at what freaking Twitter was up to this week with rate limiting on scrolling <laughs> posts. Like that's that's embarrassing. That's like rolling blackouts. Right? I thought like it was hilarious. This is well, like yeah, obviously my, you think yeah, it's funny. I but think it's, it's not, so funny. It's, I I thought it was good even because like whatever, get off this garbage app. It's great. Well, I, right, but we're talking. It's not about, good for the app. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Screw them. <laughs> like it was. Been... <laughs> but the, okay, there's a I discussion mean, what, question here. How do you here. choose which dumpster fire to cheer for? That, that's the problem. Burn, burn, yeah, yeah. burn, burn I more than the other guy. Mm, I just want them both to burn. Yeah, I want them to competitively burn. The the discussion question on this topic is. The world needs another Twitter, but should we really want another meta-run social media platform? And that's it. It's like, really? This is the one that's going to do it? Like, man. Like, I, I, I didn't really think Blue Sky had much of a chance, but I thought maybe because there was nothing else. And then now there's something else, and now I think they're screwed. And for as much as like this is a lot of momentum when Blue Sky is still oh, yeah. limiting signups because they like can't build infrastructure fast enough. I assume uh, that's that's or my something. guess. That's my guess. Yeah. Otherwise, why would you limit signups if yeah. you can just have momentum on your side? I am blown away that Meta managed to pull this out of complete Nowhere. stealth. Yeah, I had. I don't know a single person that saw this coming. No idea. No. Nope. Like okay, they probably could have seen it coming. Yeah, but, but like, I don't think anyone knew it was, was informed. coming. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
uh, how how is a company the size of Meta Facebook working on a project wonder, like this? I wonder how big the team was. Okay, well, let's get to that. One of the major developments this week is that Twitter, upon seeing the launch of Threads, oh. threatened ah. a lawsuit on the grounds yes. that Meta allegedly hired ex-Twitter employees and misappropriated Twitter's trade secrets and other intellectual property. A Meta spokesperson responded that no one on the Threads engineering team is a former Twitter employee, which I don't think is a sicker burn on Elon Musk or a sicker burn on the former Twitter employee base. <laughs> we actually literally uh, didn't need any of you <laughs> to make this of them. like kind of less feature rich I mean, Twitter. They, they wouldn't have. Again, I'm going to say it. Again, it's not. It is not very complicated. <sighs> Um, if they can, if they can build Instagram, they can build Threads. Can I just say that it is absolutely hilarious that you would go in, acquire a company, fire the majority of the employees there, and then be surprised if there was some kind of like knowledge, like brain drain that occurred that enabled a competitor. Yeah, the, it's not what happened. Is he, but is if he, it, what if so? What if it had? Like, empl what do employees owe you exactly? If, but, but if this you is, this is like, someone, like, <laughs> what? What they're gonna pretend they never worked there? This is this is part of like non competes and intellectual property though. So if if they did use like Twitter proprietary stuff, sure. But clearly, Threads is not running Twitter code, and wouldn't need to. Um, yeah, so like I don't know. It's it's clearly a lash out. Yeah. Just it, it it comes across pretty sour grapes and I just I I I'm sorry, but I can't feel bad for someone who goes in and half arbitrarily just like destroys the livelihoods of thousands of people. Oh yeah. Was that ship sustainable? No. No, probably not, but then you should, Oh, definitely should, not. Then you shouldn't have bought it. It's, yeah, that the 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 time to the time to to do this correctly yeah. was before you actually wrote the check. I, I, yeah, I think the only thing so that funny. that doesn't bother me quite as much about it is that I am rather certain they were all losing their jobs anyways. I mean, because we, we, we talked in the early days yeah. before Elon bought Twitter about how insane Twitter was as a business, just burning literally billions of dollars a year forever. With with no plan to In profitability, perpetuity. with yeah. with no like it was actually one of the like <laughs> one of the most dumpster fire businesses I've ever seen. Like it made no sense at all. So like the, it was not going to be sustainable. And the, the 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 reapers coming for a lot of these types of companies that just make no money and have no plan to ever make any money and just lose tons of money. That was a thing for a really long time. But you're seeing uh you're seeing that kind of end. So. I, yeah, I don't know. Makes me feel less bad. It still sucks that they're out of work, but I just, I don't think it's actually really that much different. Helix919 in Twitch chat says, Non-competes are hard to enforce when you broke contracts and didn't pay the severance to the employees you fired. <laughs> yeah, Yikes. that's a that's a, that's a pretty good point. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's epic. Um, oh, so someone in chat said, "How would you design a Twitter clone?" Is an extremely common tech interview question. And yeah, it is. I actually didn't know that. Yeah, just wh why? Because it's because it's like, like a, a like early university level project. <laughs> like, <laughs> the the difficulty is the scaling, right? Okay, I was gonna say. I feel like every time we have this conversation, I have to point out that serving a text post to one person is easy. Serving a text post to a hundred million people is actually not that easy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then we're on the same but page. But we've had Dig and Reddit forever. We've had Twitter forever. Like this, the knowledge around that type of tech has been around for a very long time. And the amount that something gets easy over time in the in the development space is is like quite rapid. When something is first created, it might have been extremely hard to create that thing. But three years later, six years later, nine years later, more and more on, it gets Imperator significantly easier. In a float plane chat says threads probably started as a hobby project by some of the Facebook engineers. <laughs> well, I, I think, I, is it in here? I think it was genuinely January, right? Um, 
It's not in our notes. I'm not sure. No, it's Insta. Yeah, Coder Goth says the hard part of Twitter isn't the UI; it's the scale and the content moderation. That's another big one. Yeah. But with that, with that said, I mean, Twitter has basically abandoned all pretense of content moderation at this point, as far as I can tell. Um, meanwhile, Meta is saying that they are going to take. Yeah, they want it to be the friendly platform. They want it to be the fr- I, which is actually very attractive to a lot of brands for advertisements, which I, sustain a platform. I wish them. The best of luck. Oh, yeah, I know. It'll be tough. Because the problem with having a friendly platform with a lot of users is that users is just another word for people. And people are f***ing assholes. Yeah. Um, especially when they have anonymity. And so it, imagining that you're going to somehow have... It's, it's like saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a multiplayer game. One with a non-toxic user base. It's like, well, I was with you up until you're going to make a multiplayer game. That sounds good. Um, that second part, though. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's why online play is, is never rated, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I guess that's fair enough. So, a couple things here. Yes, development did start in January. Two, it was called Project 92 internally. And I just Googled uh, Project 92 rumors. And there's stuff from, like... June, rumor has it, Meta is making a comeback, riding a virtual wave of blah, 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 something. Project 92, Meta versus Twitter, posted in June. So there's like, there was some people that were like, hmm, something's happening. But, uh, yeah. Interesting. Top Gear 1224 in Floatplane Chat asks us, where's the line between advertiser-friendly and censorship? Yeah, I don't know. That's why I don't work in the- <laughs> I hate that stuff. Our 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 thing on the forum was always like this is a tech site, just stop. It's yeah, like- the the line is that it's a completely optional service that you don't need that is run by a private company. Yeah, that- like and, and that's that's honestly it too. Like with threads That's if- not government censorship. That's 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 that their yeah, thing. Like if so threads the is the line like, is don't use it. You don't get to talk about politics ever. Well, that's that's their. That is, actually might be a good thing. It is might that, be. Are they saying that? No, oh, I'm, okay. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> I was if, gonna say, if, man, if, maybe <laughs> maybe I will. Maybe I'll take another crack at this. I would legitimately be more interested. But yeah, like if 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 they decide to say that that it, it's a private platform, this is not a government funded thing. This is not public property. Like they they could do that. The forum is exactly like that. We're like, yeah, we don't want you talking about a bunch of stuff. Why? Because we don't want to deal with it. Yeah. This is not the right place, and this is absolutely not the right time. Go somewhere else. Like, it, I don't know. It's and got, that's it. It's gotten phenomenally stupid to me, though, the kinds of things that have become political. Like, remember when gas ranges turned into a political issue for like... Yeah, everything's weird. For like six minutes But this is why this neither year? of us do this, like and this just, is why. This is too nuanced. It's weird. I'd rather just do other stuff. I, I hate content moderation is such a nightmare. <laughs> like no interest at all. When we when we started doing this like the twenty four hour live stream thing, um, we we were just responsible for like the tech side of it. So I wasn't really thinking about much else. Yeah. Once it went live, I was like, oh, oh, there's gonna be a chat. Oh no. <laughs> and then went to go see that at that point in time we had it disabled, and I was like, okay. This makes sense. It's I, kind of a weird viewing experience. Let's have but, a let's sure. have a let's have a little debate here. Sure. I personally intervened and had the chat turned back on. Yeah. No, it should be. Okay, so hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Cuz that's going to sound weird considering my my previous reaction. Uh I am going to be very surprised if there yeah. are no issues with the fact that there is a live chat on there and I hope people understand that a 24 hour live stream is going to be impossible to perfectly moderate the chat. So yep. there's going to be some stuff in there that's going to be garbage. It's, Sorry, I it is what it, it is. I expect it to be basically all garbage. Yeah. Hopefully auto moderator tools are able to do a pretty good job with it. I, but I I expect nothing. I expect it to actually be garbage. That is my personal Linus Sebastian guarantee to you that every message, even the one that you are furiously typing right now to demonstrate how galaxy your brain is and how amazing the quality of your of your post is going to be, is garbage. Everything in that live chat, everything in that live stream chat is garbage. That is my personal promise. 
there <laughs> rebel against him by saying nice things to people um but yeah no i without the live chat that thing is literally useless yeah you are actively on youtube so I YouTube has autoplay features. I don't know how much I am supposed to say or not say about it, but we are trialing a new beta yes. thing. Uh, Do you it, know what I, I am and I, I'm not allowed to say? I don't okay. at all. But when I Google it, nothing comes up. I see. Uh, okay. So that's where I'm at right now. Give me a sec here. Um, where do you okay. find the 24-hour live stream? If you go to the Linus Tech, Tech Tips channel on YouTube and then you click on the live button in the in the top banner thingy, you will see two live streams. You'll see what you're watching right now if you're on YouTube. Um, well, I mean, you're going... So, yeah, you'll see the WAN show that says what happened, a big bold text at the bottom. You can see these two guys there. Uh, and then to the right of it, you'll see another live stream that just says LTT TV is the thumbnail. Um, and yeah. LTT TV, 24-7 tech tips with a thousand people watching. Okay, well, they didn't specifically say that it's NDA'd. Yeah, I didn't find anything saying that either. I just thought it was really weird that when I Googled it, I couldn't find it. Uh... And there's no like, uh, you know, like Google knowledge base documentation for it or anything. All okay. the documentation is literally that that you're looking at right now. Is that That's the PDF, right? I yeah. can only sort of see your phone. Yeah. Then yeah, that's that's everything I can find. Okay, screw it. I'm just gonna say what it is then. Oh boy. Uh, we're participating in a in a trial that they're doing, where it's it's I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say what it's called or give a ton of detail, but okay, it's designed for TVs. Yes. So the point of this is for us to do the curation rather than for YouTube to do the curation, and for us to basically go okay. Here's some content that we think represents the best of or like um, uh, things that our audience loves th about our brand. Encode it all together. And then anytime on your TV, you'll just see like LTT TV. And it's just, it's more like a channel. It's like a station. Yeah. Yeah. And less like uh, an algorithm because it's not algorithmic, which kind of surprised me. Yeah, me too. Like what? That's that's like the anti Google thing to do. Yeah, it's weird. Um and so obviously, yeah, I was I was really interested in participating in it just to kind of see you know, what does that look like? Is there is is there is this a potential funnel to bring new people into LTT content? Is to to expose videos from the back catalog that haven't been picked up algorithmically at least not recently, right? Like I, um, I, I don't know. So we actually, it was a ton of work for the team, everyone from the editors to Luke's team, to the business team, to the writing team, like getting every, getting all these videos selected. And um, originally we were actually gonna cut them together with <sighs> baked in, uh, we, we recorded the, the business team, including Dennis recorded like some new um, Oh, those spots. are in there, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but yeah. how do those work? Do they just randomly play once in a while or are they encoded with video? No, I think it's each or... individual video has it slotted into that same video okay so, so we, we had we had proposed an idea oh okay where we were going to have those ads go between the videos but it was brought up by by james that like the float plane audience is used to the ads being removed so sometimes you'll do you're like we're going to segue to our sponsor thing and then the video will just keep playing and there's no ad the float plane audience is used to that because they're like paying for the, that and that's normal and stuff but average viewers might think that's a little weird and a little jarring so we mm. want he wanted the ads to be slotted in there. So each video on there is actually edited with the ad slotted in. Oh, okay. That sounds like it was a lot of work. Yeah, which is why we recommended just putting it in between. But if the viewing experience is better or whatever, that's that's James. Shout out editing team yeah. uh, for getting that done. Dan, you know we've done three topics already, right? Uh, yeah, I just forgot. Uh, just it's just based on the time. Really? We were supposed to... I, I'm not supposed to have explained merch messages yet? Are you sure? That doesn't seem right. Haven't we been live for like half an hour? Time, time flies when you're having fun. No, we, we've already done too many topics. We're going to explain merch messages now. <laughs>
For those of you who are new to the show, the way to interact <laughs> is not via Super Chats, not via Twitch Bits, not via Thread Bobbins. I'm sure there will be some kind of monetization on threads at some point. Ah. It doesn't matter. The point is, it's merch messages. Scarves. So if you want to send a merch message, which could just be a little thing down there, you know, a question for our producer, Dan, or could be a little shout out for your friends or just, you know, uh, lots of people just talk about how much they, they love the products. That is something I actually kind of, okay, I didn't get mad, but I got a little impatient with the team today. Our site has literally like tens of thousands of positive reviews for our products we don't use them in our marketing at all not at all not even a little bit and to be clear i don't blame the team because i know there are some technical challenges that prevent it right now like the um the i know this you were saying the system that we use for reviews on the site is like super limited oh like we can't even sort them in in any meaningful way or something i remember you telling me you, you can sort them. It's it's closed, so we can't change it. Right. Okay. Um, and you can sort them, but some of the sorting is really weird. Like, you particularly hated this one. If you sort by most helpful, yeah, all it does is sort it by total likes. Yeah. It doesn't consider the dislikes at all. So something <laughs> could have, like, 300 likes and 78,000 dislikes, and it'll be like, this is the most helpful one. Yeah. It's like, nah. Which is very, very bad logic. That might actually be helpful, now that I think about it. But, but... That that math often doesn't work. Yeah, sure. Um, any any anywho, the point is, um, what, what was I going to say? Something something. Right, right, right. So some people just like shout it out. Other times, people post questions, and Luke and I will address a limited number of them during WAN show after dark. And the best thing about all of it is that unlike those other ways of throwing money at your screen at streamers, you get stuff. If we don't get to your question or your comment. Well, hey, you get your order in the mail, and the quality is great, and all that good stuff. It's, sorry, that's not Shopify. So the way to send a merch message is by going to lttstore.com, and in the cart, you will see a box pop up if we're live, and it'll say, oh, is that going to always be there? Because of the 24-7 stream. Uh, no. Oh, good. Okay, so you will see a box. Oh, is it even going to be there right now? It is. Conrad actually reworked this for a completely different reason. Oh. And it's, oh, no, it wouldn't have done it anyways. Okay. Well, anyway, in yeah. the cart, you'll see a box where you can type a merch message, and then all you have to do is complete checking out, and you will ha send your merch message. It was, it was based on Twitch being live, not YouTube. Oh, so it wouldn't have done it in the past. But Conrad has re reworked how it works anyways, so regardless, it's good. It will, it's not automatic anymore. You, like, tell merch messages to be live or not. Okay. All right. I have a couple of updates for you guys on the store. First up, reminder that our PCMR collection is live. I'm just going to show you guys that real yeah. quick here. Linus laptop, the PCMR connection, co connection, collection. So we've got the hoodie, which I think the team did a just great job of the design for. Includes our phone pocket because, of course, it does. There's the one that keeps it from coming out. Nice embroidered logo no low quality k you know just like iron on logos for us i mean okay this one's screen printed but that's on a shirt okay <laughs> all right <laughs> it's different pcmr t-shirt pcmr water bottle we've got a desk pad simple simple clean branding just pcmr on the top and then it's got the yellow accent for the stitching around the outside and then an enamel pin so you guys can check that out. And the other big thing to talk about this week is that if you guys are waiting for an update on the stubby screwdriver, we have one for you. All you've got to do is go to lmg.gg slash stubby. It will land you on this page and you can be the first to know once it comes in stock, which is hopefully going to be sometime in the next month or so, actually. We're, we're pretty excited to launch it. Mm -hmm. Last but not least... We have a big deal event coming next. Oh, my God. Is that coming next week? Good gravy. Okay. Uh, we have a big event coming next week. We almost never discount things, but we have uh, oh. we've decided to take a page out of Amazon's <sighs> book and uh, ride on the coattails of their completely arbitrary shopping holiday, Prime Day. Um, so we're going to have Lime Day. You had which to work is, your name into it. If you have to. I didn't even name it. I didn't even name it. I do believe the chief vision officer would have accepted the name. 
Well, I just think it's funny. Mm -hmm. You know, if life gives you dead stock, make limes. <laughs> that was honestly what was in my head at the time. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, so we, we do have some, some slow-moving items that we are going to absolutely... Like, like almost like t-shirt cannon firing them into the crowd, uh, be doing some deals on. Uh, heads up that on this one, you are likely to get a few emails each day during the three days of the event. That will be the best way to be notified of new deals as they go up, but it will be a bit spammy. So bear that in mind. You have to specifically sign up for it by going to lmg.gg slash lime. Okay. Okay. Uh, lime. Okay. LMG.gg. No, 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 no. So we're no. using a different email for this. I, I guess so. I certainly hope so. This is a, this is a Lime Day. LT as, long, as long as people are manually signing up for that up amount of emails, we're probably it's good. It's the LTT inventory management experience. <laughs> Fail runs July 12th to 14th. Sign up to get first dibs. Even though some of these deals are going to have hundreds or even like a couple thousand units available, I am They'll expecting them to sell out extremely quickly. I've heard some of the... Have yeah. you seen some of them? No, but I've, I've, I was informed of one or two of them, but I haven't actually seen them. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, and <laughs> hopefully our email will still work. It's the, it's the Linus's closing on the building for the badminton center sale. Ah, <laughs> now I fully understand. Because like I, I'm not as liquid as I would like to be right now. I need to be more liquid. Let's, go, more, let's make some liquid. lime juice. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Um, merch messages. They're in the cart, so when you buy stuff, they're there. Sounds good. All right, cool. Oh, are you gonna stream Lime Day? Stream it. You you do a stream for Prime Day, don't you? I don't even think we're doing a Prime Day stream this time. Oh. The community hates it. <laughs> um, we almost never find any good deals. Why does the community hate it? Just because there's no good deals? Um, just because, like, what's there to not hate about Amazon? Is it like, I, I, <laughs> I legitimately don't shop on Amazon, so I don't... Is it like the Steam sale? Where, um, like, the first few were sick, and now all of them, they're just all the same as they were before? I don't even know if the first Prime Day was sick. <laughs> okay. Rough. I, I mean, it's it's one of those things where, from time to time, there are good deals. Oh, that's a really good question. Oh, what is it? Uh, AJ in Full Plane Chat said, if we place multiple orders, um, can we combine shipping to save I don't, on shipping costs? I don't think we have a way to do yeah, that. I don't think so either, but I wonder if it's a good idea to talk to the people that do shipping and be like, yeah, there's likely a lot of same customer multiple orders over the next couple days. So I'm going to be honest with you. In a way that um, I'm sure our new CEO would actually not really appreciate because this is pretty inside baseball. Our intention is to combine shipments if we can oh, okay. and pocket the difference because Sick. we are going extremely aggressive on these deals and you're still getting a good deal. Okay. <laughs> that may be one of the few ways we actually make any money. <laughs> <laughs> I choked on my own laugh there. Wow. Um I mean, uh... So there you go, buddy. I, I, I mean, this is I mean, a thing I mean, that places do. In the interest of protecting the environment and consuming yeah. less jet fuel... I mean, it is literally we have made the just better for people, We have right? made the difficult decision to not bill you any differently and combine your shipments. You, you don't have to have a delivery person show up to your house and fake knock on your door and then leave multiple times. Now it's only once. Now it's once. So you only have to go to the post office one time. Uh, it's, um, uh, in others, <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. I think it's fine. Um, uh, in, in other news, yeah, the goat story, I think. Do you just don't want to do any merch messages? You just explain oh, the no, whole thing. explaining. Your yeah. note, your note sucks, Dan. Ugh. Yeah, get a better note, Dan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if we were to do merch messages, it should say explain merch messages plus do three. I can't work with these people. <laughs> uh, we normally do two merch messages. We've, how long have we been doing this together now? <laughs> a thousand years. <laughs> Hit always, me, Dan. Always feels like the first time. Uh, <laughs> hi, DLL. Love the show. Apple grew into nearby buildings in its early years, like LTT, and eventually built a unified campus. Do you think LTT can get there? And what's your dream of LTT under one roof? I think that sounds like a problem for our incoming CEO to deal with. 
I have actually explicitly already talked to multiple people internally about our space constraints, including Terran, and said that I do not intend to deal with it. I, uh, I, I, I don't think it's realistic for us to keep buying buildings. I mean, we've talked about that on the WAN show before. It's just reached the point now where... Um, We're in BC, man. It just like doesn't work. Yeah, the costs just go up higher than you can save up money yeah. at a certain point. It's like point. how real estate works in BC. And how, how much space we would need. Like you, you could even look at the badminton building and go, well, Linus, you could have just bought us the badminton building. No, I couldn't. The badminton building would not it's be not, enough to accommodate LMG in its, its current state. It's also state. not like zoned for office space and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's exactly. A, it wouldn't really work. And uh, office is even more expensive. So we would have to be getting an office zoned building. It would have to be like, we're already, we are already occupying something like 55,000 square feet or something like that. I don't know what that is in like real units but because uh, i'm canadian um but but it's a lot it's a ton and so for us to move everything consolidate everything and then also have like a reasonable amount of room to grow we'd be basically looking at a hundred thousand square foot campus there is a solution oh, what just a company town you're pitching this again? Because you can't move, again. you can't convince everyone. We're bringing back Linus Bucks. Like if, if if you tried to move the entire company to somewhere a little bit, you know, further away from Vancouver, mm -hmm. it's going to be really hard because every single person at the company is going to have to figure out housing at the same time. What if you just provided that solution for them at the same time? Guaranteed renters. Internet would be sick. We might as well just provide free IT services. Cause, the you know, hilarious, why not? The hilarious part of this is there are legitimately, like in BC, in the province where we live, towns where you, someone like me could realistically yeah. roll up and actually just be like, I'll take it. Yep. Um, because not because I actually not because I have best, like billionaire money, but because they are actually worthless. Yeah. The best um, part of the joke is how realistic it is. Yeah, that's not happening. That's not happening. No one would want to live there, Luke. Speak for yourself. <laughs> you two are not Luke, Luke and I living in the woods. Representative. Yeah, that's sick. Let's go. Uh, yeah, let's go. Yeah, oh, yeah. The opportunity to own a significant amount of land for this many people in BC would probably be cool. My favorite part about this is I know it actually annoys him. <laughs> <sighs> uh, Jaden in floodplain chat we live in Vancouver obviously we would see uh, see hey hey okay but I get to be the cult leader and I have like sex slaves right this is fine that, already that's, is already that's basically <laughs> that's probably already happening there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Yvonne might take issue with that. Uh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I mean, not if they're male. I don't think she'd care about that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I, I, we know. We do? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a slave. <laughs> <laughs> you get paid. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Um, <laughs> anywho. I uh, got one more for you here, I guess. <laughs> Unless you'd like to move on. <laughs> Both would be okay. <laughs> no, we can, do, we can do one more. Hey, L, L, and D. Linus, why, uh, why do p most people prefer oh. NVIDIA's DLSS limited to NVIDIA cards over the more accessible FSR, which is universal and open source, like XESS, despite not working equally on competitor products? Because it's better and people like things that are better. Yeah. Um, the open source community loves to be like, okay, we've got a comparison matrix. Okay, feature one, check, check. Feature two, check, check. Feature three, check, check. Feature four, is it open source? Check, not check, not check, bad. It's really not that Which, black and white, guys. That it, has some legitimacy to it. It can be great, especially yeah. if you happen to have a development team that can massage that open source thing into something that works really great for you. Or, or if, if it's a security project, so you want the transparency. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but... 
No. FSR is it not as good as DLSS, yeah. at least not at this time. And there's a there's a there's a, a a subset of people out there that actually will pay more for an experience that, in some cases, is just one that they perceive to be better. Doesn't even necessarily matter if it's if it's actually better. People 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 don't mind paying extra for something that they feel is 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 better and in this case they're they're right it it is it is better um so that's why that's that's the answer and i would love for fsr to take off to the point where it it, it really is you know uh, a a legitimately feature complete uh equivalent solution but as far as i can tell didn't didn't amd have a, an fsr update or something that was supposed to add like AI or frame generation or something like it wasn't FSR supposed to get an update like in Q2 that it is not Q2 anymore and AMD FSR Q2 update or something hold on um and then they just like went quiet on it guys let let, let, let me know let me know Ryok says yet again AMD FUD and pro <sighs> Nvidia statements getting tiring no actually so, you're getting tiring we literally didn't say anything about we literally only said things that are just objectively true. I'm so sorry you're upset. <sighs> this uh, is another uh, consistent thing. There's there's positives and negatives, and there's personality types in all communities. I love a very large amount of the open source community, but that's another problem. If you don't like it, it's just like, oh, you are now automatically evil. It's like, well, hold on. Um, Someone in chat said... Yeah, I can't find it. The it's town, not FSR though. The town would obviously be called LMG, also known as Linus Municipal Government. I mean, we wouldn't call the town that, but uh, the government. Yeah, that that could be on my business card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Linus Municipal Government. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Omnipotent God Power at Linus Municipal Government. <laughs> <laughs> I think we still have to follow federal and provincial laws. Oh, darn. Not yeah. with that attitude. Nah, we just got to move further out. <laughs> but, but my understanding is the way the cult towns get around that is all the local law enforcement just doesn't talk to ah, outsiders. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's apparently the move. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Yeah, no one in chat has told me what that, what that thing was that we were supposed to get like an update on some feature. Come on, guys. Ah, forget it. I give up. All right, Dan. Oh, you want us to do two more topics? We have a ton of topics today, so we I guess do. that's good. Luke, you want to pick one? Uh, do you want to do the goat one? Yeah, let's do the goat one. All right. CEO of a parent or alleged you know you do rug this, I'm gonna go pee. game sues Goat, Goat Moth, a YouTuber that we have featured on WAN Show in the past as he exposed uh, the Wiggle, also known as cheating in Tarkov. Goat, a YouTuber. Uh, yep. Uh, okay, cool. The opening line is exactly what I just said. That makes a lot of sense. Good job. Uh, he is being sued for a more recent video about TerraSynth, a game developer that Goat claims has used shady behavior to promote its realistic flight and war simulator. Track while scan. Just a quick summary of the video. Uh, TerraSynth, TerraSynth's teaser trailer released on D-Day received backlash last year due to the fact that the gameplay, well, clearly fake, uh, or sorry, the gameplay is clearly fake. According to a source who left the project, the gameplay footage is actually just static models of planes on tracks that just go around these invisible tracks. Yeah, not, not, not great. The teaser likewise uses footage taken without permission. This is, this is honestly the part that kind of bothered me a lot. Uh, the teaser likewise uses footage taken without permission of actual soldiers in Afghanistan, many of whom died two days after the recording was taken, and that was used in the trailer. <sighs> most of assets used in Terrace, allegedly, most of the assets used in Terrace's game roadmap and trailers were stolen or purchased assets that the company tried to pass off as their own, including, if I remember correctly, uh, a, a picture of a radar screen just taken from like Creative Commons off like Wikipedia or something. They were like, this will be asset for game. Uh, but again, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Uh, CEO Ali Mavan. I hope I'm saying that right, has no prior experience with game development and is 
Allegedly, CEO Ali Mavan has no prior experience with game development and is alleged to have exaggerated significant portions of his resume and to have seriously mis misrepresented the game to potential early adopters whom he was asking for money. Uh, allegedly, Terrasynth has continued to release trailers, including for a supposed AI traffic controller. Mavan has likewa allegedly likewise claimed to be bidding for contracts from the U.S. military, for what I do not know. Uh, allegedly, much of this evidence is publicly available, <laughs> but Goat likewise interviewed insiders to the project. Mavan is now suing Goat and his insider uh, con tractors for defamation defamation and violating an nda contract in the state of ohio neither mavan nor goat allegedly live in ohio and mavan doesn't allegedly own or operate any business there ohio lacks anti-slap laws um I think it defines this afterwards, which punish for, yeah, which punish frivolous lawsuits intended to silence speech that filter, uh, that the, uh, filer, sorry, disagrees with goat denies having any NDA with Terrasynth at this time. Uh, allegedly. Oh no, this one's actually, yeah. No, I'm still going to say allegedly. Allegedly, Mavan appears to have sent at least three DMCA requests to a Reddit user who posted screenshots of Terrasynth's Discord in an apparent attempt to get the user's name and personal information. Mavan has likewise attempted to do a copyright takedown of Goat's video, which YouTube just categorically denied. Um, they didn't even involve Goat. They were just like, nope, that is not legit. Uh, so yeah, that's going down. Maybe throw Goat some support, check out the video, um, and we'll have to see how this goes moving forward. This is far from the first time we've seen a, a YouTuber doing some form of investigative journalism get attacked uh, and sued by the company that they were doing the investigative journalism on. Um, yeah, SLAP stands for Strategic Lawsuits Against Public Participation. So it's using lawsuits to crush people from... Uh, dissenting um, but yeah it's currently at 205,000 views I watched it it was quite interesting pretty much the whole way through and I suggest you check it out and throw go some love that's about it next topic you shouldn't defraud yeah that's my contribution here yeah it's um we, we've seen it a bunch unless the one to whom you are performing the defrauding against is in fact a fraudster themselves Okay. Oh, he's practicing. I like this. I think I think uh, on legal levels that's still a no, but then you just sit in that like, are you okay with it range? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Um, and I helped. Yeah. What else do you want to talk nice. about? Nice. Maybe that'll be legal in, in Linus Town. It could be. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like if you fraud me, I fraud you right back. Yeah. Eye for an eye, tooth for and a tooth. And it's just everything's okay. <laughs> it's going to be biblical, baby. <laughs> um, the end of Giffy Cat? GIF hosting service Giphy Cat, which has around 220 million... I'd like to interject for a moment. What you're refer referring to as GIF uh, is actually GIF, or as I like to refer to it, GIF plus a f*** you! <laughs> <laughs> we call it Jiffy Cat, just to like butcher it as much as possible. Um, snap, parent... I wonder... Yeah. I wonder what the official like pronunciation of Jiffy Cat is. Jiffy Cat sounds very, like, 1940s. Cat in a hurry, I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Snap, the parent company of both Jiffy Cat and Snapchat, has no apparent plan to archive any of the material, leaving it to users to download whatever content they wish to preserve. Not oh, surprised. wow. Yeah. Uh, Jiffy Cat, which I'm going to call it from now on, uh, has been running poorly for months with users experiencing failed uploads, extensive downtime, and complete silence from the service team. On May 18th, the site's TLS certificate lapsed, and it was only renewed four days later. Wow. Jiffy Cat, Giffy, Jiffy Cat, I forgot how I was saying it, uh, was among the first web services to allow video encoding to GIFs, GIFs, whatever. Uh, and it is one of the few free services, I wonder why, that supports high-definition short clips and animation. Discussion question, what madness convinces a company to offer high-quality video encoding? <laughs> what can we possibly do without that kind of madness? Yeah, so, um, bummer, I yep. guess. Darn. 
Yeah, I mean, no, it actually though, sucks. This, I like this using does it. totally suck. You know, whether we're talking about what are, what are some of the other did. Imgur, Photo Bucket, yep. just image hosting sites free we to just, use. Yeah, we just we just took them for granted for oh, so yeah. long, and them being free never made any sense. No, ever. Nope. What what possible? means could they have to to recoup their revenue it, snap starting to charge people snap still exists like do people use snapchat huh i'm sure someone does hold on i i think i have their stock ticker in my just like i'm i'm curious how tech stocks are doing list good gravy um snapchat Monthly active users from a high of a share price of almost ninety dollars back sometime in like late twenty twenty one, they are down to about ten bucks, huh. and they've been flatlined for basically a year. Yeah, yeah. When you Google Snapchat monthly active users, uh, at least my autofill only autofills for twenty twenty two and twenty twenty one. No yep. searching for monthly active users in this current year. People are like, you know, people are still horny, so Snap exists. But can't you can't you do that with like WhatsApp now? Send uh, I don't ephemeral know. pictures here. I'll try. Ephemeral and pictures are also stupid. I mean, okay. Well, let's talk about that. Okay. Okay, you. Um, if something shows up on a screen. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> You're like uh, it's not actually ephemeral. Like, okay. what's the point? I, I've never, never understood. Okay, that's fair. Because right. I, I have literally talked. I actually think it's almost a negative, if anything, because it gives you this false confidence. If if you're not very technical, it gives you this false confidence that it's going to go away. Especially when they add that feature that's like, oh, they took a screenshot, because that's the only way to capture a screen, right? So now you're like, I will know if they did it. It's like, well, that's not true. Like. It's just not true. Yeah. False so sense of security. It's a stupid feature. <laughs> That's it. I don't know. I, I just, I am very much not a fan. I've always thought it was dumb. Um, yeah, that's it. All right, fine. See you later, <laughs> Jiffy Cat. Bye. That does actually suck. I actually did like using it. I like sending gifts this is one that um we're probably going to have a bit of a longer conversation about mm. a new french law Ooh. allows police to spy using consumer devices that's right this is this is actually happening this is not in like iran or something like this is in this is in europe okay french lawmakers have agreed to a bill that allows police to spy on suspects remember the word suspects is important here. They are suspected of something. They have not actually been tried. Um, they're, they're, not, they're not guilty yet. Um, allows police to spy on suspects through remotely activating the camera, microphone, and a GPS of their phones and other devices, including laptops, cars, and phones. Holy shit. Um... But it's okay, they say, because this only applies to offenses punishable by at least five years in jail. Use of the provision must be approved by a judge, and the surveillance cannot exceed six months. Oof. The provision cannot be used against sensitive professions, such as, how convenient is this, doctors, journalists, lawyers, <laughs> judges, and members of parliament. Oh, well, that covers all the bases, then. We're, we're definitely not worried about, like, billions of dollars worth of IP being able to be accessed by anyone that does this. Uh, the French justice minister has said that it would affect, at most, dozens of cases a year. The new law has been widely criticized as authoritarian. Because it is, yeah. Neat. Holy crap. Yeah. Absolutely mind-blowing. So if you are suspected of a crime that would be punishable by five years in prison, but you happen to be a member of parliament or a lawyer, then they can't surveil you? Someone in chat said, so a warrant. So it's a warrant. I don't think that's the same. Because you have to be served with a warrant, don't you? 
No, I have no idea. No, you don't never have to be never been warrant warrant. searched. Hmm. But the fact that they can execute this remotely and like, okay, you won't the, know. The bigger issue is what happens to this data. Who has access to it? Right. It's going to leak at some point. Yeah, of course. Every, it, everything leaks at some point. Of course it will. Or, I mean, n- never mind leak. Like, what is to prevent someone from using these mechanisms? Oh, I mean, yeah, if they exist. A couple weeks ago, we talked about how Amazon <clears throat> shut down that guy's, yeah. um, like, devices because of an alleged incident with a delivery driver or something like that. And I'm sitting here going, the fact that an Amazon employee can even do that is uh, is mind-blowing. It shouldn't even be possible. And here we're sitting here going, yeah, we're just, just going to remotely activate your camera, microphone, GPS of like, we are, we are actually headed into a dystopian future, sir. Yeah. You mentioned the, the car, the car, um, uh, smart cars have always been a little weird for that. I don't know. Like there's something to be said about having a car that is just a car, you know? Dark24 asks, how is this any different than me surveilling all of the employees in Linus Town? Well, the difference is that they're all going to know that I'm sitting around yeah. with my pants off, yep. enjoying, you know, the voyeurism of watching their daily lives. Mm-hmm. These people don't know. Yeah. Consenting adults. Exactly. Yeah. Obviously. I feel like just in case someone didn't get it, that was a joke. <laughs> we are joking about something that was previously brought up on Wan Show, which was talking about Linus Town. None of that was serious. Just before we get some message from someone who super did not get it. Who actually doesn't understand that I do not think that that's okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We don't have any net nanny on people's work computers or like, no. you know, screen, we do, uh, screen monitoring or anything like that. We are implementing uh, stuff that will show like like remote management tools. And you like shouldn't do personal stuff on your work computer and things like that. Um, so there's that. Oh, what are we monitoring for? I actually don't know about any of this. So I guess I'm getting my briefing. It's mostly management so like we can make sure that people are getting certain updates to browsers, updates to Windows, things oh, okay. like that. If a security breach is detected, uh, we can remote air. I hate this term so much, but we can remote. I've ranted to it him before. That's why he laughed. We we can remote air gap computers, which is not air gapping them literally at all. Mm-hmm. I hate that term, but whatever. Um, hey, we can also request remote into people's computers using this. Um, I think there will be a certain tier where we can remote in without requesting, but if I remember correctly, the goal for that is computers that are not individuals' machines. Okay. Where it's like, oh, this is like the Stream Deck PC, or the, sorry, the Stream Cart PC or something, like that type of stuff. If it's an individual's workstation, it won't be a, uh, non-request, whatever, blah, 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 blah. There's, there's a bunch of, we went through it with Yvonne. Okay. All right. Yeah, that all sounds fine. Um, question you guys for you. Using Ninja. Yes. There you go. Question for you. Mm. Um, would you have any interest in a network switch that can be remotely uh, configured to completely, like, physically disconnect a port? Yeah. Okay. Because they they reached out. They like wanted to work together or something like that. Oh. Um, so like, is that what kind of machines would that be useful for? Because I don't think we'd be able to use them for everything because they're not 10 gig or whatever. Like they wouldn't be for performance applications. Hmm. Uh, but that that's their whole shtick is that you actually physically disable the port. But then the, the question I had was if you can remotely disable the port. Can you remotely enable can it? Can you remotely re-enable it? And then, and then is it really air gapped? I mean, it's probably better than if you can remotely enable it. I just it's it's just irrelevant in my opinion. Okay, so you, you well, and then if you can't, then it's then you it's irrelevant because you might as well just go back there and unplug it. Like if you have to have physical kinda. access to it. I don't know. Well, okay. no, well, not really. No, I'll I'll send it to you. Yeah, it could be interesting. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll send I'll send it to you. Um, people are probably people are probably curious. I'm just gonna if I don't find it immediately, searching for air gap. Oh, here it is. Um, OSI layer one network kill switch slash air gap system. 
Um, we're a small cyber hardware startup based in the UK. Blah, 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 blah. So it's the literal equivalent of having someone at your rack physically pulling or unplugging your LAN cable. So how, how, how so? How does it mm. work? They have remote triggers in development, such as uh, LoRaWAN and Zigbee. So it would be separate from your LAN network. That's actually more interesting. If someone, if someone had, was on, like, if someone had managed to get into your Zigbee controller and also coordinated a cyber attack on a computer that they it's wanted to make lot, sure you can't. have a lot going on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's another factor. You know, nothing is bulletproof, but what you can do is you can add factors. So it's another security factor. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of that's cool. Anyway, it looks like that. It's a network switch, all right. Uh, it's a network switch. Yep, can confirm. So, yeah, okay, but sorry. How does it do it? Because that <laughs> that that just sounded like fake air gapping again. I, I didn't read it. I haven't looked at it. I don't know. I'll forward it to you. Okay, we'll figure it out. I just don't think things should be called air gap if there is no gap of air. Technically, there's probably a very small gap of air. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> um, Technically, yeah. we're just a long tube. I really thought we were going to talk about that French law a lot more than we ended up doing, but I guess... Other I don't think than, there's a lot to say. It's just kind of... Other than very bad. Reprehensible. It's you, you, you can never imagine when you make something like this that the tools are not going to end up in the hands of someone that you don't want them to be. And any time there's a back door, that means there is a possible door for someone else to find. And any time you make a law like this, you should assume that someone will use it on you someday, and then you should not yeah. do that. Yep. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not pro, you know, I'm not pro people not, I'm not pro people getting away with breaking the law, you know. Like I, I'm, I'm sure Ne'er Do Wells had similar objections to street lamps when they implemented them in the like 1800s or, you know, whenever, whenever street lamps showed up, apparently the, the reduction in just sort of general street crime was like enormous just from lights. Uh, let me see if I can, let me see if I can find the, uh... oh, wait, hold on. No, little rigorous evidence exists to support this contention. Oh, hold on, man. Now I, now I can't find it. Um, in the UK, an average of 38 fewer crimes were observed in areas with improved street lighting based on five studies. Um, man, I was reading a thing a, a long time ago, so I'm not going to be able to find it again, I don't think. But it was something to do with like when street lighting was first implemented. It had like an enormous impact or something like that. But uh, apparently I just am completely off base on all of this. So there you go. Sweet. Um, yeah. <laughs> chat street lamps basically the same thing as pointing cameras at everyone in their own house no that no it's, <laughs> it's not the same thing i'm just saying like uh, we're on i feel like we're on this slippery slope right now where we're just kind of like yeah what's another camera what's another microphone and at a certain point it's like no actually it that that's actually bad um yeah um, like there's a, there's an old picture of, uh, Zuckerberg sitting at his laptop and his camera's taped over. And you'd think like this, this person should have substantial security, right? So it shouldn't be a problem. So why does he care? Maybe because it like is a problem anyways, you are never fully secured out. Right. And like the fact that these things have cameras on both ends of them. I never use the selfie cam literally ever. I, I don't know if the selfie cam on this phone has actually like ever been used. I just flip it around and take the picture that way. So like, cause it's a better camera. No scope. Yeah. Like whatever. I don't know. I don't care. I'm not taking pictures of myself that often. So like I, I've thought about just covering it up before, but then I'm like, well, there's still the camera on the other side and microphones and everything else and all the other cameras and all the other everythings. So it's like, <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> never a video call? Not off my phone. No, no, never. I, I don't generally like being on my phone. 
I especially don't really like video calls. Yeah. Actually, kind of, I kind of hate them. Like, if I want to pick my nose or something, then... Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, I, I saw some speculation that uh, I'm a cokehead because I, like... Oh. No, I just have a lot of nose hair. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and it grows into the... It grows from the one side and then kind of, like, tickles the other side. It's like... You ah, have to scratch it all the time. Yeah. Um, that's that's the the less interesting but far more based in reality explanation for that by the way we're aging <laughs> yeah it's pretty awesome oh man time to talk sponsors so someone in chat why take a picture of yourself and you can take a picture of the burrito <laughs> exactly <laughs> I guarantee you there's more uh, pictures of, like, food in my phone than pictures of myself. Oh, you take man. food pictures? Yeah, sometimes. What do I take pictures of? Here, why don't we play categorize the picture? Oh, God. We can't look at the pictures on my phone, though, but I'll tell you what they are. Oh, my are. God. <laughs> I don't even... I don't need to know that. Uh, okay. My family. My family again. Float plane. Uh, my kids petting a goat. Merch messages. My cat. Weights. Um, me and Yvonne in the badminton building. Uh, a picture that I needed to figure out some networking stuff at my my partner's parents' place. Yvonne in bed, but it's safe for work. Uh, a bottle yeah. of mayonnaise that I wanted to see if my parents were cool with because I needed to bring mayonnaise over to their place. And mm -hmm. it was like weird because it was Japanese or something. Picture of a kid at a dance recital. A book that I want to buy for someone for Christmas. A shot of the green screen upstairs. I don't know why I needed that. Uh, my my notes, because I take paper notes when I'm working out, because I'm weird and old, but I wanted to send a picture of it to someone, so my notes. The scoreboard after I absolutely annihilated Yvonne at bubble hockey. <laughs> oh, that was kind of brutal. 14 to 1. Yeah, it's no wonder she doesn't want to play games with me. Uh, my bird? A paint deficiency to send to the painters. <laughs> We're pretty boring. Yeah, actually. I okay. told you we're aging. <sighs> oh, okay. This was with the other camera, though, but my mustache. So there is actually a selfie, but I only took the selfie because I thought it was, I looked stupid, not because I was trying to look good. <laughs> and you didn't even bother to wipe your lens. That looked awful. Yeah, because I didn't care. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> oh, man. Linus takes pictures, Luke just screenshots life. That is honestly, that is mostly what the, the, the camera's for, is, like, is effectively that. You don't have to save that stuff to your camera roll, though. If you take, if well, okay, I don't know. I primarily use WhatsApp for personal communication. So if you just use the camera icon in the app. Oh, no, no. It doesn't go to your gallery. It just sends it to the person and then you never see it again. I think I have every single messaging app a person could possibly have because everyone wants to use something different so i don't necessarily know which person i'm sending it to and i know the that version of that camera thing at least the last time i used it which has been a while so maybe it's better but the one in discord which is my most commonly used messaging app is trash it doesn't show you the whole camera so when you take the picture there's extra stuff that it sends when you send the picture that you weren't able to see when you were taking the picture which is like the worst thing ever People want uh, bird pictures. I don't. I don't. I don't know how to. Do that. I can't do this well. Uh... Oh my. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I just sent you a picture. Oh, I mean, I, I told you it's been a long time. It might be different now. Yeah, it doesn't go to your camera roll. Mm, it does save it locally though, so it probably just saves it in another folder, and then I don't bother backing up those folders. I only back up my like gallery folder, like my cam. Call it, call, I call it camera roll because, fun fact, my first smartphone that wasn't a BlackBerry was an iPhone. Uh, so I have some like old iPhone user habits. Mm. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> All oh, right, sponsors. The show is brought to you today by Blackpoint Cyber. Cybersecurity is critical. <laughs> Trust me, I know. Say my talking points. 
I, I, I do know, though. Um, cy- <laughs> the former national security experts at Black Point Cyber agree, and that's what drove them to become a cybersecurity company that specializes in advanced threat detection and response solutions for managed service providers. Their expert-led team offers a streamlined security ecosystem that keeps MSPs and their customers safe from cyber threats. With customizable solutions to fit every company's needs, you too can operate with an elite end-to-end cybersecurity strategy. Just learn more about Black Point Cyber's advanced threat detection by visiting the link down below. The show is also brought to you by Squarespace. Have you ever doubted your abilities? Don't, because there's at least one thing you can definitely do. Build a website with Squarespace. With Squarespace, you can be up and running in a matter of hours. You don't need to be a graphic designer or anything. Their award-winning templates will help make sure your website stands out. Plus, if you're interested in how it's doing, they have built-in tools to help you find out what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. Our Linus Media Group website was built quickly using Squarespace, and with 24-7 support, you can get your problems solved anytime. So start building your website today and get 10% off your first purchase by visiting squarespace.com slash WAN. The show is also brought to you by SignalWire. SignalWire is a leading provider of cloud-native, low-code APIs. It's created by the team behind FreeSwitch, one of the largest open-source communications platforms. SignalWire makes it simple to add features like interactive AI agents that can act as a virtual assistant into your existing applications so you don't have to spend months coding. SignalWire's low-code solutions also make it easy to deploy in minutes without having to sacrifice customization. You can get a $25 credit with code WAN25 when you sign up at SignalWire.com slash WAN. And you can use this credit to build your own intelligent AI agent with plain text in minutes. All right. What do you think? Anti-telemarketing bot gets upgraded with AI? Because this kind of sounds awesome. Anti-telemarketer service Jolly Roger has upgraded its... Oh, wait. We're supposed to do three uh, merch messages. Okay, Dan. Sorry, you hit me. You could... Nope, 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 nope. You're allowed to be in charge if you want to go with your own flow. That's fine. I don't want to be anymore. That's why I hire people to be my boss. Okay, then pay attention. Uh, Hey, DLD. First merch message to The Dan Show. I was just wondering how uh, how you built a startup from the ground up. How did you avoid burning out during your growing period? Uh, When you had that dragon energy? Oh, what a good question. How I built a startup? You can't stop. I mean, I got a little lucky. I had a great team. I worked really hard. And as for how I kept the energy, um, well, I was always in debt. So if I (laughs) didn't keep going hard, then I would never pay off my debt. And I would have to be bankrupt and lose my house. And my family would be on the street. So if that's not a strong enough motivation, um, I don't know what is. That's uh, that's how to do it. Um, Which you know, also, I, a, you know, there were a, other ideas. In a potentially negative way, you've you've kind of used that against yourself before. You're like, ah, I'm not feeling energized. Let's like get myself in some more debt. Uh, I don't I've talk seen about it. That. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's go let's go double down <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. i don't know uh yeah i don't know how great that yeah, is yeah a ton but... of stress i'm probably gonna die much younger than i would have otherwise yeah all right we're kind of like competing on which one of us is gonna expire first yeah like i'm i'm older than him but like i'm pretty sure he's actually gonna beat me yep he's bigger than me that that's a that big is thing a... too that's actually a thing yeah yeah, tall people are all like, yeah, I'm tall, you know, what's up? And I'm all like, yeah, I'm short. And uh, how many, like, tall 95-year-olds do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Boom, got him. <laughs> Boom, roasted. <laughs> Hi, DLL. How do you think Matter will change the home automation environment? Will we actually get better compatibility and interoperability between devices and systems? I hope so, but honestly, it's, uh, it's the whole xkcd standards pr- proliferate comic strip all over again right theoretically matter has enough momentum behind it that it's going to basically allow for consolidation so everything will just kind of be interoperable in practice you know even some of the more open and interoperable standards in the past have struggled with either um you know compliance from the the companies that are building hardware for them or they've you know struggled with a a, a lackluster ecosystem because of all the certification involved. Like there's always challenges. There's no perfect solution. I hope matter wins. Um, 
I, 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 I give up though. Like at this point, I accept that there's going to be a ton of disparate ecosystems and I'm going to have to rely on home assistant or similar to just try to tie them all together somehow. Okay. And last one. Hello, hello. For tech news that is only somewhat gaming related, how will you decide between game linked and tech linked? Most news is pretty obvious, but I feel like some stories could go either way. Hmm. I don't know. I would assume that game linked would be pure gaming <clears throat> and tech linked would be where something that's kind of on the edge would fall. I think it's going to get really interesting, you know, when maybe we have other verticals that we also cover that tech link kind of touches on once in a while and we break those out into their own thing. And then all of a sudden um, there's like nothing left for tech linked anymore. It's, I, I mean, it's happened to a degree to LTT. Do you know how much harder it is to come up with an idea for an LTT short now that circuit. tech quickie and short circuit and tech linked exist? Yeah. Like people even complain when we do something that's too similar to what should be on those other channels. This just felt like a short circuit. It's like, well, it would have been an LTT like six months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think there's also a way that you can approach the topic. Um, like the, I feel like there could be a tech-linked approach to a certain topic that goes into both categories and a game-linked approach to that topic. Like the gamer's view mm. on it versus the techie's view on it. I mean, that was kind of the idea with a channel like Mac Address is that there would be kind of the PC guy perspective over yeah. an LTT and there'd be like the Mac perspective but i feel like people will often see us upload a video yeah, covering the, the same topic on two channels and go like why'd you guys do this and the reality of it is it's like a different editorial team i think um, that's less of an issue with linked because it'll be part of a video that has like 10 15 other things in it mm. i don't know i don't think it's going to be that big of a problem i think the writers over at linked will take care of it i think it'll be fine go team Mm -hmm. All right, one more, Dan. I got one more. Sure. Uh, hi, Linus and Co. Your philosophy on only making things you feel can improve on is inspiring. Is there any product that you can identify that needs improvement that you wouldn't want to tackle? Gaming. Games. I actually had a game developer reach out to me today, sort of asking if we want to partner to to make a game. It's very hard. And, you know, I'm basically sitting here going like, um, you know, here's, here's pretty much the thought process that I went through. Because if you go back to WAN show five years ago or something like that, five, six years ago, Luke and I would talk sometimes about, you know, ideas for games or, you know, the the desire to to make a game or something like that. Like I, I feel like I feel like anyone who plays games probably thinks it at some point. Like, man, how cool would it be if it was like this, but not quite like that? Oh man, I should just I should it'd be so cool to do my own game and I do it exactly the way that I think it should be done. Um but the reality of it is that the genres of games that I'm most interested in are just not profitable like i you know yeah. i looked at something like youtuber simulator right that pewdiepie partnership with some like gotcha game company i don't i don't know who made it yeah maybe they're super reputable i don't know the point is it was a microtransaction game um and i i look at something like that and i go okay so the, the one side of me like the business side of me looks at that and goes wow that was a lot of money that would have been pretty okay <laughs> right and then there's the like the more creative side of me that looks at um it looks at a game like CrossCode, I think is a perfect example of the game that I would make if I was smart enough and talented enough and had the vision to make. Like, it's so good. Um, but I, I can't imagine that it made them the same kind of money as YouTuber Simulator. And I'm sitting here going, where's the middle ground here? I actually, I actually don't, I don't know. Like, theoretically, episodic gaming was supposed to be it. That it was ongoing revenue yeah. so that you can not just, you know, push and release and then lay off everybody and just have this toxic cycle, right? Like it was supposed to make things sustainable, but in the longer term, it ended up being microtransactions, cosmetics, um, and then, you know, ultimately 
performance advantages in, in many games because that's the way to best motivate people to just keep putting money into the machine, right? So with all that in mind, right? Like obviously I recognize issues with the gaming industry, but I want no part of it. It's... Yeah, and a lot of those issues are, oof, not to be that guy, but a lot of those issues are because of the community's behavior. Like if, if people didn't buy excessively microtransactions to insane amounts, giving companies millions and millions and millions and millions of more dollars than they would have otherwise gotten, they would not make games entirely based around microtransactions. Like it works because the community embraces it and people are going to be like, oh, I don't embrace it. It's like, yeah, good, but other people do. And so, it only takes a small number. That's the thing that was really it, surprising to me. When I found out what percentage of the revenue of the mobile gaming industry comes from the, the, the whales and how few there are, like the fact that, that you'll have artists sitting designing specific items for a whale who you know is going to buy it, like according to their tastes. Luke blew my mind when he told me this, like, like some $500 cosmetic item that they don't, they don't tell that person they don't like write them a letter, but they know that they're not going to be able to resist, you know, that one. And they will, someone will sit and oh, make, they, they knowing buy all they the will sell things. one. Or like they, they really like large, uh, gratuitous swords that are shaped in a particular way and look really aggressive. They buy just all of them. So it's like, okay, we'll just make another one of those guaranteed sale. Yeah. Uh, my, my, something that's been kind of worrying me um is the loss of I, I know i always find ways to tie it back but whatever is the loss of bethesda style games because there are very few other companies that have really tried to make the really actually same type of thing um there's games that get kind of similar but there's kind of a bethesda id this this game where it's completely open you can just never do the main quest ever if you don't want it's it's more about constructing this interesting universe you can do whatever you want in it i think their biggest departure from this was fallout 4 that has me a little bit concerned about starfield but i'm sure it'll still be a good game whatever it doesn't matter um but yeah i'm a little worried about that how did you never get into breath of the wild that still blows me away yeah that's like the whole thing is you just get dumped into this world and you just go exploring. I should probably just emulate it because I really didn't enjoy playing it on a Switch. Yeah, just it was mostly it. the like. It's really easy now, <clears throat> like stupid easy. Like I could just do, set it up for you. No, I'll do it myself. But like, okay, yeah, maybe I'll do it sometime. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a ton you, of gaming time lately. I mean, unless you're planning to actually dump your own ROMs and your own firmware off of your Switch, I could help you set it up. I will do that. Okay. I have pictures of birds. Uh, people were asking for pictures Gosh. of birds. Here are my birds. There's one of my birds. His name is Wally. Cute boy. Here is other bird. His name is Scoopy. Or just Scoop. Also cute boy. There you go. No pirating done here. Just birds. <laughs> no privateering. You might sorry. as well have it on your shoulder, Luke. It's a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> that is specifically why I chose that timing. I have been waiting to uh waiting to do it, but I did want to do it right then because of that. Um but yeah, those are those are my birds, Scoop and Wally. Um Okay. Should we talk about how emojis can be legally binding? Yeah. This is pretty funny. <coughs> no, no. I wanted to talk about the anti-telemarketing bot. Ah, yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. Jolly Roger has updated its bots with ChatGPT and AI voice generation. The service is designed to waste telemarketers' time through meandering conversations <laughs> with a variety of bot personas, including an overwhelmed mother, a rambling drunk, and an elderly man who just woke up from a nap. <laughs> when a human telemarketer connects... The bot spends a few minutes giving generic pre-programmed responses like rambling about needing coffee, asking the caller to repeat their name, telling them they sound like a former classmate, and interjecting with the occasional mm-hmm and uh-huh in the background. ChatGPT assesses the telemarketer's <laughs> spiel, then outputs relevant responses in the bot's chosen persona. This is apparently particularly effective given that the primary tactic of telemarketers is to keep their target on the phone as long as possible. 
<laughs> uh, likewise, malicious scammers prefer to prey on people who don't seem totally mentally with it, especially seniors, making this a pretty effective counter. Now, what I want to know is how do you actually implement this on your phone? I, I want everyone who calls me to talk to Jolly Roger. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh. Get started for mobile and landlines. Okay, what am I even looking at here? Thank you for signing up. If you want to know how to, how to set up a mobile phone, hello. Jolly Roger Telephone. Okay, download the Captain's Log app. It's fun, free, and makes it really easy to set up your phone to forward unanswered calls to us for screening. Ooh. Ooh. So, okay. uh, so it doesn't happen locally? Uh, apparently not. Hmm. Hmm. I mean... Hmm. So you upload your phone if, contacts mm. into an allow list. You can have a personal greeting. Mm. Mm. Who are you people? I would have liked it more if you chose to send the phone call to it. Then yeah. I don't care if it's happening yeah. remotely or whatever. Robots available in US, UK, Australia, and New Zealand. Service available to Canadians, but requires long distance calling to the US. Okay, I think I'm... I think I'm out for now, but overall, it sounds pretty funny. Um, I just don't know if I'm going to use it. Yeah. Okay, what were we going to talk about? Um, emojis. Yeah. Emojis can be legally binding. A Canadian court has ruled that an emoji can be considered bi a binding signature to a legal contract. In March of 2021, Kent Mickleborough, a Canadian grain buyer, sent out, a text uh, sent out text messages to several farmers in the vicinity talking about how he was looking to buy 86 tons of flax at a price of $17 Canadian per bushel. Chris, Chris Actor, a Canadian farmer, responded to the text and both got into correspondence on the phone. Mickleborough then uh, proceeded to send a picture of the contract to Actor, asking him to confirm the contract. Actor responded with a thumbs up emoji, but did not otherwise follow up. By November, the time when the contract was supposed to be fulfilled, Flax had risen to $41 a bushel. Yikes. Over twice the amount. Yeah. Uh, Mickleborough then sued Actor for failing to provide the requested Flax, arguing that the emoji was an agreement to the terms of the contract. Actor argued, in turn, that he was merely confirming that he had received the contract, Ooh. not that he agreed to it and that he assumed that uh, another contract would be sent more formally through fax or email. Now, according that's to the courts... not a terrible argument. I, I, I think that's actually a pretty good argument. Now, according to the court's filing, he will be really? required... Really? Yeah, no, this is, this, is, this is done. That's garbage. This is confirmed. According to the court's ruling, he will be required to pay 82,000 Canadian dollars, so about four bucks American, plus interest for failing to deliver the flax. Discussion question. Should something as ambiguous as an emoji really be considered a legally binding statement? Um, I mean, if he put the emoji in the signature section of the contract, like maybe, but then but that's not what happened. But in the verbal slightest. contracts are binding here. So that's something. Canada's an emoji a is place. a lot more documented than just a verbal agreement. You know about how we like don't actually really have any rights, right? Have I talked to you about that before? Yeah. Yeah. Canada's Canada's sick. Um, yeah, that's really stupid because the, the way that actor, I hope I'm saying that name right. I'm pretty sure about Mickleboro, but actor, I'm not certain. Um, the way that they, they, they said that they did this or they said they confirmed they received the contract, that's a very normal way to do things. See a message, give it a thumbs up as like, I, I, I've seen this, whatever. Yeah. <sighs> It's a little bit of a stretch, I think. The judge said it appears the deal was at least verbally struck, according to the documents. Wow. Is it is it the emoji that won this court case then or no? The judge wrote, I am satisfied on the balance of probabilities that Chris okayed or approved the contract just like he had done before, except this time... He used a thumbs up emoji. In my opinion, when considering all of the circumstances, that meant approval of the flax contract and not simply that he had received the contract and was going to think about it. In my view, a reasonable bystander knowing all the background would come into this and 
come to the same objective understanding that the parties had reached a, a consensus. Um, I don't agree. Like they had done on numerous other occasions, though. That's so something that's, that we're that's missing that's an interesting here. one. Yes. So this is yeah. not some rando contract from some rando you've never dealt with before. This if this is, is how they've done it in the past? If this is, hey... Have we got a price? If if the only item was price, and you're basically like, here's the contract with the price we discussed, and someone's like, yep. Depends on the wording a bit. A bit. Um, yeah. it, it also depends on precedent. Like, if, if they have done a... If, they, if a contract has been sent in the past, yeah. and he thumbs it up, and then they followed through and that contract was fulfilled, then I would be like, absolutely, yes, it, it completely is that. Yeah. But I have absolutely thumbs things up as like I have received this. You know, like I I was hoping to get like screenshots of exactly yeah. what the texts were, but none of the source articles here appear to have it. Yeah, I'm assuming it's um tied up in court or something. Yeah. I don't know much about legal process. Yeah, I I I I I what I what I hope is that if we saw the actual exchange of text messages, it would become very obvious that they were agreeing to the contract but otherwise that's that's pretty freaky man yeah like if you well we we have we have issues here where like someone will digitally sign something in like a font that doesn't really look like a signature and we'll be like ah it should probably look more like it was properly signed and then this dude, this dude send in emojis <laughs> what <laughs> is that an issue we have it's it has been before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Signatures are the stupidest. They're just so dumb. The stupidest they are possible so validation dumb. of anything. Absolutely. If it's a wit <clears throat> if it's witnessed by a notary or whatever, like that's at least something. But just, man, have you ever had have you ever had a cashier like not accept your credit card because the back, no the back isn't the back. signed? I pretty much guarantee mine isn't right now. Like, don't don't pull it out on the stream. I wasn't gonna. Anyways. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was gonna do it on the table, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, but, but I don't think I've ever signed a credit card. Okay, have you ever had them ask you to sign it before no, they'll let you I, use it? No, but I know people that have had that before. Yeah. What What does that prove? I used to be a stickler. When I first, when I had my first retail job ever, I would check ID for every single credit card because that's I was I was told to do that. So I was like, okay, yeah, and I just did it. I checked I too, ID actually. every single time, and I would legitimately like actually try to it, pair it that was ncix policy yeah some people would get really mad they'd be like i don't want to show you my id i'd be like then i don't want to take your credit card i don't yeah really... i would do the same thing yeah and then i i don't know if i've ever been id'd for using my credit card for well, any value amount yeah but it's pins now yeah you're but you're a young boy i got id'd Okay. I was older than you, so it was it was. I was still... I, no, no. I was IDing people when they were putting in pins and stuff. Oh, you you don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they told me I did at the time. Where was this? This was Best Buy. <laughs> what? I don't know. Yeah, that's <laughs> stupid. I well, the pins are not very secure. They're a lot more secure than like. No, this is like definitely. Totally it has mean. a signature on the back for sure. Yeah, like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, we, uh, no, I absolutely, I absolutely had to, you know, oh man, yeah, this that's is reminding thing. me People of People are talking, like, Conrad in chat just mentioned that he taps f things up to $400. That's wild. Tap um, doesn't take a pin. Kumo Star says, all my credit cards say CID. That's something I used to see a lot back in the day. Is you people would the... People would write that in the signature thing because they understand that signatures mean absolutely nothing and if someone steals their card they want them to then again if i stole someone's credit card and it said cid on the back i'm sure i could come up with a creative way to use some isopropyl alcohol yeah, to just remove get rid it. of it just sign over top of it with some kind of chicken scratch signature or whatever like i really why are we still using pieces of plastic to move our money around i don't understand <laughs> it all the tap limits i'm seeing i don't know how conrad has one for for uh, 400 bucks. Someone else in chat says they have one for 600 though, so this is apparently a thing. Mine's 200. I googled it, they're all saying 250. But there's multiple people in chat saying that they have one for more than that. So what, you can, this this person tapped, uh, I tapped to pay with my phone at a micro center for 600 bucks. So you don't need ID for a $600 transaction? That's wild, that's a lot of money. Like we're going all the way back. <laughs> the pins are like useless now. Yeah, that's it's like true. how how many times are you going to process a transaction for more than your tap limit? I like never have it happen. You know, I I I would I would say that it would 
I, okay, I I would <sighs> far be it for me to just far be it for me to just come up with you know a security best practice live on the WAN show, but I'd say it's probably not unreasonable to just disable the taps on your cards, just gouge the chips out, and then if you want to tap, then you should ingest your card into your phone and use your phone for tap payments. And then you can still, you'll still be able to use. I your never use my phone. Do you have to? You have to unlock your phone to tap pay. Yeah, you have to. You have to unlock your phone. Yeah. So then, at least you're at least you're adding some amount of validation to any kind of contactless payment, and you can still use your card with a pin. Like you can still insert it. It's a it's a separate it's a separate chip. It's a it's it's not the RFID chip that oh. is used for. Apparently, there's no tap limit in the U.S. There can't be no tap limit. Someone in the chat said I tapped without ID for a twelve hundred dollar chair. That's stupid. <laughs> I've tapped an, a different person. I've tapped twelve hundred dollars in a foreign country. A different person. I tapped to pay seventeen hundred dollars at a micro center. That's actually completely bananas. <laughs> this is this is like going back to checkbooks, except people can just write checks and they don't even need to sign the checks. They just. They just hand checks to people and they just use your money. <laughs> That's wild. Elon tapped to buy Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Elon tapped for other reasons. Uh, help make sure we don't run out of people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a major concern, Luke. Um, I regularly charge people $3,500 and they can tap no problem. I tapped to pay like $2,500 for my PC build components last year. Oh, it was on my iPhone. That's a little different. Yeah, that's different. That's validated. That's not a tap. Yeah, you're, you're, you're signing into your phone. That, that is definitely different. Yeah, no. When, we, when we're talking tap, we're talking when you have just, just the card, just the credit card or yeah. the bank card, and you, and just, you, just, you just touch it on something. Whiskey no Nerd 88 print, in Floatplane Chat said, I work for Capital One Bank, and yes, you can tap for up to $5,000 for your card. That's stupid. You can tap for what my, my gut is going to tell me has got to be more than most people's credit limits. I have no idea what the average credit limit Not is. Not a clue, but I can't imagine it's more than $5,000. You know, I had a really funny conversation with, um, with Ploof. We were discussing just like, you know, credit card usage and, um, you know, frugal, frugal lifestyle. I was, I was talking about how someone was like complaining about how out of touch I am because I'm always saying, don't buy cheap garbage, buy used good stuff because it costs the same and it lasts longer and performs better. Um, and that's not out of touch. And if you think it's out of touch, you're actually Wait, stupid. Yeah, no, it's the thing that comes up like quite often, actually, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Uh, well, all you got to do is go read the comments on any of those don't buy cheap GPUs videos. Ugh. Like, you remember that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, how elitist Linus. You know, you, uh, some people can't afford better. That's not the point. That, you, you, then you, oh, my, oh, my God. We have anyway, been there. Go anyway. buy used stuff. It's better. So we were talking about sort of like the frugal lifestyle because um, I, I was saying like a lot of the way that I look at used versus new products comes from not growing up with money. And yeah. um, he was talking about, we actually uh, drove the same model of car at some point. And he was talking about how like, yeah, he uses his credit card for everything, but he was always just like completely anal about paying it off. And uh, he said that a big part of the reason for it was actually that he had a fundal mis fundamental misunderstanding about how interest <laughs> works on credit cards. And what I realized is that a lot of the anxiety that I had about carrying a balance on my credit card, I started out with a $500 credit limit. And the reason is that, and look, I don't care. People who are morally opposed to credit ratings or who think credit cards are the work of the devil or whatever in North America, it's not how it works. It's really important to have a good credit rating and having a credit card that you pay off all the time is actually not de detrimental. It is actually beneficial to you because there are benefits of paying with a credit card versus paying with a debit card. I really don't feel like debating it with you. You're wrong. Um, so I so I had a $500 credit limit credit card. And one of the reasons that it was so low was that I wanted to make sure that I never, ever carried a balance on it because I thought that the 23% interest or whatever 
was immediately owed oh. if you carried your balance to the next month. And it wasn't until he told me that that was a big part of why he was so on top of his credit card all the time that I realized, holy crap, I thought the exact same thing until sometime into my adult life. I don't remember exactly when I figured out that it was an annual interest rate, um, but then like billed monthly. Yeah. Um, so I thought that if I spent a hundred dollars, I would, and I didn't pay it back by the end of the month, I would owe hundred and twenty three dollars. So I used my credit card like cash, and I, and it and it baffled me that anyone ever lost track of how much they owed on their credit card because oh my god, every five dollars is six dollars. <laughs> Who could possibly lose track of that? Um, <laughs> Oh, this is great. Float plane chat. It's not? I'm 20 and this is news to me. It you doesn't, know what? doesn't mean you shouldn't treat it that way. Yeah, the best advice I can give you is treat it like that. Yeah. Because that's exactly how you fall into the trap. Yeah, no, stop stop thinking you're dumb. There's all these people being like, I'm a moron. Stop. <laughs> like actually. Yeah, you're you're actually doing it you're actually doing it good. Yeah. There's there's huge benefits. Again, I don't feel like debating this with Europeans. I don't care. You, you, what you think about it doesn't matter right now. Um, there's Different. huge huge benefits to North Americans for using a credit card regularly and always making sure that it's paid off. If you don't, you like can't buy a house and stuff. And stuff. Like, like it's I, actually extremely like important. Like we're not going to talk about it. Yeah. Um, but that's how they get you. As soon as you start carrying a balance, it's it, it creates that bad habit, right? Um, so yeah, treat it like this. Oh man, oh man, people in chat, why did you tell me this? I would have lived better without this knowledge. The way that people are reacting actually has me actually concerned. <laughs> I, di I didn't see this coming. I didn't see people reacting this way. There's also a component of like usage limit as well. So if you have like $500 of credit, you can't have $500 on it. Otherwise you also get impacted. Like there's a, there's a point you can't use all of your allowed credit. Otherwise, it also negatively affects your credit rating. Yeah, it's a whole it's oh. a whole like black magic yeah. to you know, figure out exactly how the math works. But the, the best thing is to use it regularly and pay it off before the end of every month. I, I remember someone telling, because one of my genius ideas was like, oh, well, I only have like a crappy savings account anyway with like 0.8% interest or whatever. So just to make sure that I never go over my credit card limit, I'll just dump my savings into my credit card and then it'll always carry a positive balance. <laughs> and so I'll just never have to like worry about accidentally whatever. And then I can spend more than my $500 credit limit on a single transaction as well because I have you like buffer. It, but yeah. then I was told that that's bad. Having it like overpaid all the time is like bad or oh, something. Yeah, I didn't actually know that part. Yeah, I, that might not even be true or it might not be true anymore. Um, I remember Yvonne was telling me something. I often do that before trips on purpose just in case like massive emergency. No, a little bit's fine. Okay. But yeah, just like always having it. I don't know. It like, yeah, looks weird or something. Anything that's like weird is bad. That makes sense. Yvonne was telling me that like having, um, this was for like a line of credit for the business or something like that. I'm like, I don't know, just get it. And then if we need it, then we have it. And she's like, no, no, if you like have it and don't use it, that's bad. And I was like, why? Then that just means you're a baller and you like, you know, can handle your bills or something. She's like, no, no, it's not how they see it. I'm like, all right, sure. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> don't go into well, details. Well, I don't know. This, but... was for this was for the business. I don't know if personally it <laughs> okay. is different. So. Okay. I'm going to have to look into that. <laughs> oh, man. I do I do use Avant for financial advice. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I messaged her a couple months ago. I was like, what credit card do I get? I don't know. <laughs> Disclaimer, Yvonne is not a financial advisor. No, 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 no. Oh, but, lordy. Hey, she knows some stuff. She's smart in things. <sighs> they should public publish the algorithm. Yeah, that would be good for us, wouldn't it? Um, okay, moving on. Do you have any other... Yeah, Nintendo published their annual report for the last financial year, and they don't pay their executives completely asinine amounts of money. Yeah, I talked about this in Game Link. Go, go check it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to butcher all the names, so I'm not going to say them. But uh, the top five are essentially two and a half million, two million, one and a half million, just over one million, and just under one million. A year. Yeah. 
Um, and does this include stock value? Uh, this seems to be total compensation. Wow. Um, yeah, this is the total pay of their highest compensated employees. And apparently this is just relatively normal in Japan. Uh, the CEO of Sega gets about $3 million a year, and the president of Square Enix receives $4 million annually. Actually, it sounds like Nintendo's kind of cheaping out a little bit there. <laughs> um, this is significantly below the total compensation received by game company CEOs elsewhere in the world, um, even if the base salaries are not dissimilar. So Andrew Wilson of EA has a salary of $1.3 million, but made $39 million in total compensation in 2020. EA's net income for 2021 was 837 million, while Nintendo's was 4.37 billion. Now, it should be noted, shareholders have since voted to reduce Wilson's compensation package, but he's still expected to make 20 million in 2023. Um, discussion question is: Is there a diminishing return in terms of incentive when it comes to absurdly high bonuses? Is having high but extremely unstable compensation a problem for long-term thinking and leadership? Yeah, that's absolutely a problem. Like I, uh... oh man, executive pay. If you... have you ever have you ever looked at the line divergence between like median worker pay and executive pay in North America? It's like actually ridiculous over the last like criminal. 50 years yeah um it's kind of cool it's kind of cool to see nintendo not lose the plot here also i do have to kind of wonder a little bit how they retain top talent when you know nintendo's kind of the envy of the gaming industry when it comes to just consistently delivering gaming experiences that delight their customers year after year after year after year Work culture in Japan is very different. I do know that company loyalty culture oh, in yeah. Japan is much bigger. I was reading an article about um, someone who runs a business um, helping people quit their jobs. <laughs> so they go in and represent them to to go and quit the job. And they just, like, the person just, like, sits there while the representative explains that they're not going to be working there anymore. Yeah, it's like, in a, like, a, it's like a really big thing. Smooth and tactful way. And I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Which in some ways I can respect a lot and in other ways I think is rife for potential abuse. But honestly, from what I've heard over a bunch of years of not paying very much attention, it, it usually goes pretty well. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's scary. If that happened here, I do not think it would go well. <laughs> I think that's pretty weird. Yeah. Like I just don't even. I, I don't. I don't mean here as in Linus Media Group. I mean here as in North America. Oh no! I, I just yeah. mean personally. If if someone, I, I don't even. I don't even think we'd let the stranger into the building. Like why are they? Oh oh! I don't even mean that. Oh oh! Um, sorry. That that no that happens in North America. That's a thing. Really? Oh absolutely! Yeah, that's a thing on both sides too. You can hire an outside person to fire someone for you, and you can hire an outside person to quit for you. Really? Both of those things are a thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How about that? I meant the like absolutely immense amount of the the like social expectation from the country that you are loyal to your company. Hopefully I'm describing this properly. I do not mean to offend. But yeah, I th I think I think that would be abused if it was here and it as far as my understanding goes, it doesn't really get abused there, which is which is cool. Modoru says, work culture in Japan makes it really hard to get rehired if you are, for whatever reason, let go or even quit of your own volition. That's unfortunate. That's, wow. That's potentially really rough. Huh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, um, yeah, here's good. <laughs> Relatively speaking. I, think. I mean, we have our problems. Um, yeah. TikTok tries a novel approach, book publishing. Sorry, I just really thought this was funny. Yeah, I know, let's go. ByteDance appears to be ramping up its new publishing arm, Eighth Note Press, which started approaching self-published writers earlier this year. This might be an interesting opportunity for some nice. authors, as TikTok has become an unexpected powerhouse in catapulting below-the-radar novels into smash hits. It has also raised concerns that ByteDance might use TikTok to squeeze out user-driven viral book recommendations through promotion of its own publications. Yep, that makes sense. Yep. Um, 
Discussion question here is, I love this, are you more worried about ByteDance promoting pro-China books through their platform or about vapid nonsense written by thirst trappers? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just both. I don't know. Uh, are you actually expecting an actual answer? Yeah. Oh, man. Um, honestly, probably the second. I'm not going to tell you why I know about them, but there are some very low quality, high volume ebook platforms out there that are basically just like garbage for people who just want to read romance books i i knew it's i yeah i was gonna ask if it was specifically i'm immensely curious i can tell you that it is very easy to spend a lot of microtransaction money on said platforms very easy that Why is a thing that can happen this? i just i know there are things i know luke sometimes i know things huh yeah huh well, I know he will tell me no more than that. That's so. yeah, it's going to be about it. Yeah. Um, in other news, the huh. 12 volt high power connector has been replaced with a new standard. CI SIG will be replacing it with one called 12 volt 2x6. Oh, good. Good name. Um, the new specification lists no changes to the header, meaning that the new standard should be compatible with existing 12-volt high-power headers. The changes are expected to prevent power from flowing if the connector is not fully inserted, something that apparently wasn't a huge priority before. <laughs> um, notable changes. The depth of power terminals has been increased from 4.2 to 4.45 millimeters. Okay. The depth of the sense pin terminals has been decreased from four millimeters to two and a half, and they support cards up to 675 watts, up from just 600. So there you go. Hopefully we won't have any more burned ones, but also who knows. And I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. We could talk about Fairphone coming to America. That seems pretty good. That's about it. Fairphone is coming to America. Yeah, five-year warranty. Hey, Fairphone, sick. Yeah. Why don't we do some merch messages, Dan? What do yeah. you got for me? For when after dark? It's time for when after dark. Yeah, when now? After dark. What? <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking at potential. Are you going to try to defeat me at bubble hockey after WAN show today? I'm oh. still undefeated. Yvonne got close. I can I can try. I think I'll only have one game in me because my right. my back is very tired. Um, and that machine is short. I discovered that I people try. actually build platforms to lift it up because ah. they aren't my height. That yeah, makes sense. Yeah, that's the thing that definitely makes sense. I like actually can't play too many games in a row because like how just the tight it just. just I wonder if nodding. part of it is just like the tension. Oh, very possibly. Because if you're like if you're just like relaxed and playing, it should be fine. No, I'd have to squat to do that. Like I can't I can't use the controls properly. Really? I don't think so. I I think you probably or or, or I'd be cranking my neck like crazy, which is just going to oh, create a new problem. Like there's no yeah yeah. Basically, I bought a super checks machine because I am an idiot. It's fun. It's, it's a ludicrous game. Really fun. I love it's it. It's very. It's a lot deeper than I would have expected. It's like, like really fun. a lot more. Like yeah. Assume the sumo stance. Yeah, but for how long? Like these aren't even that short of games. It's like three minutes. No. 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 Let's time it. I don't think so. Okay, well, we can okay. time it. We can okay. time. It. Have you done that before? I well, no, I just looked it up. It's uh, apparently the default is three minute periods. Oh yeah, but there's like pauses. And... Okay, all right, all right, all right, yeah. all right, all right. Okay, so yeah, let's get into this. Uh, there's uh, <laughs> there's, there's also a... one person has to score at the end. Oh yeah, the final puck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that can last for a long time. That's sometimes. true. That's true. That yeah, true. Anyways, we got a lot of potential, so yeah. um, I'm just going to get right into the curated with some horrible ones. Um, <laughs> pool updates. Oh, we talked about that, didn't we? No, we didn't. You and I did. The pool. We weren't live. Hold on. Oh. Hold on. No, you're you're having a friendly chat. Ah, can't tell the difference sometimes. <laughs> it's basically just blurs into one continuum. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Dan, do you want to flip over to my? Um... My finger medulla. Not right now. 
Uh, hold on. Just, just can you relax for a second? Just, uh, no, not really. Relax, not when you're baby. talking about sharing your screen. Um, okay. All and right. Specifically, a point in time I cannot relax. Okay. All right. Oh. Oh, I see what you want. Camera. Line of scan. There we go. Oh, yeah, I could have done that. So, theoretically, it is full of water. There is still plenty of time for things to be screwed up, but I will say, to their credit, since I called them out on social media, um, they have had a fire under their butt and have actually done work. Oh, this is the original contractors? Yeah. Oh. There's still time for it to be screwed up. Um, like it sort of potentially already is. Yeah, I had already talked to Luke about how Yvonne specified, and I, I look, I have to, I have to. It's still incorrect. It's a first world problem. It is still incorrect. Yvonne specified that she would like the water to be cool blue. That is green. You might need to explain how that makes any sense. Yeah. At all. So the the plaster that they line it with has flecks that are supposed to reflect and color the water. Um, and it is not the color that um, she uh, specified, which Egg means it doesn't match the tile. Eggshell rant V2. So it just honestly looks kind of stupid. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like... Got him. At this point, I think I'd take basically anything. <laughs> oh, um, boy. Yeah, so there's just been, you know, one thing after another with it, but and there's there's still time for the equipment to like not work properly. I don't know. And it's it's possible that this is just from schmoo in the water from the plaster. Like they just plastered it and polished it, so maybe it's like Yeah. Maybe it's schmooed or something. Potentially. I, I don't think so. That's a lot of water in there now. Like the How long be, was it sitting before they filled it? It can't be that much schmoo. It it wasn't. Like oh. they polished it and then filled it. Oh. Like, yeah, no, no. Yeah, no, no. No, it's um, it's green. So that's cool. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, just, it's just frustrating because, yes, first world problem. Yes, 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 yes. But on the other hand, they asked us what color we wanted. <laughs> so don't ask if yeah. uh, you're not going to do it. <laughs> uh, someone's like, I would ask them to change it. No, I'm, we're not doing that. They they would have to they would have to like what like jackhammer out the previous yeah. plaster like it's not could you just do another layer I freaking I don't know we're not we're not doing that so that's that's the color that it is now and I wish we had a different tile color or something because they really don't match at all but yeah it is what it is and even though it is now full of water it's not actually full it's filling right now even though it's filling with water right now um, it's still going to be a month before we can swim, I think. Linus is pissed at the minimum viable product and people are surprised. That's not, well, that's not, it's, it's like incorrect. Yeah, if someone asks you what color shirt you want and, and like, you say green and they say, okay, and then they send you a red a one. a plain blue shirt. Yeah, like, you're going to be like, hold on a well, minute. what the fuck? This isn't this is the wrong what product. I paid for. Like it's- Yeah, like you have a shirt, he has a pool. Pool is the wrong color. The shirt is the wrong color. Like is it? I don't like know. that's 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 stupid. Yeah. If you if you weren't able to if you weren't able to control the color of it, why'd you ask me then? Yeah. Like it's. Guys, why why are you like why are you try why are you trying to be dumb? Oh, he's saying I don't really understand. It's fine. It's okay. Whatever. Pool wrong. Moving on. Next message. The real question is: Can we land a float plane in it? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Courtesy of legendary rust here. We could the model one. Yeah. Yeah. They like actually could. Oh man. A model float plane. Man, that's a product that I wanted to do. Not not a not a float plane. That that's a product that I wanted to do um like a long time ago when my kids were little and they they still like took baths together and stuff like that. And I was like, man, how cool would it be to do like an RC an RC boat, but that's like, I don't know, three inches long and that has like a water resistant remote that you can just like rip around in the tub. And I know they exist, but like a good one. A good one. Yeah. You know, one that is actually good. <laughs> Man, how cool would it be to just have like little six inch boats that you can like rip around in the pool? I'd be so into that. Freaking awesome. <laughs> Hi, Linus and Luke. Linus, how can I start badminton if I have zero friends? Uh, maybe at your upcoming place? 
And Luke, when you started badminton, what was the hardest thing you um, had to get used to? You first. Um, the hardest thing he had to get used to was <laughs> sucking so much. <laughs> wow. Compared to someone who is obviously so wow. much weaker and lower testosterone. Wow. wow. Because he sucks compared to me. Like so much ass. And Linus, how about... Uh... That's why I have to clean out his mouth. Let's get the ass taste out. <laughs> Couldn't get him. So close. <laughs> oh, I had to like hold the water in the front so I could breathe behind it. <laughs> I'm lucky I didn't have too much. <laughs> I'm gonna get water all over the front of that laptop one day. You mark my words. <laughs> Not yet. Oh my goodness. Uh, sorry, the, the question for me, how to get into it with zero friends, is really tough. Uh, especially because most of the centers don't do drop-in anymore these days. Not since the COVID uh, shutdowns. Also, when you go play drop-in as a novice, it's really hard to get people to play with you. I found that more casual groups tend to show up at like school gyms and church gyms. I, I have no idea how to find them, though. I know in Taiwan, I'll just like go on uh, meet up or, and then once you get into like one group, you find someone who's kind of at your level and then you like network through them. That's kind of the best way to do it. Uh, but yeah, our, our place will have drop-in sessions, but like, again, uh, there's nothing we're going to be able to do to force people to yeah. play with you. And if you're a complete novice, uh, you, you might... have to be social and ask people to play. Yeah, it's tough. <clears throat> For me, it was a lot of the movement is very unnatural to me. Um, uh, there's there's certain like stances and things you do with movement where in in contact sports it's like a big no no because you're putting yourself in an in a fairly unstable position if someone was to become in contact with you at that point in time if that makes sense it's not necessarily super unstable but if an outside force like pushed you you'd fall over um, so things like that my brain is like telling me no 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 don't don't do this but then. Everyone watching me is like, okay, the way you're moving sucks and is dumb and you need to do this other way. Um, also like hitting the birdies, my brain wants to like club them <laughs> and you're supposed to do this like wrist turn thing more and stuff like that. Like a lot of it just doesn't really, a lot of sports come fairly naturally to me and badminton does not come very naturally to me. Yeah. Okay. This one might get a bit spicy. Oh Lord. Do you agree with Lewis Rossman's take that Google is going to war with ad blockers? Is nickel and diming and a sign of YouTube being on the verge of monetary collapse? Any... I mean, I don't think it's a particularly hot take that <clears throat> YouTube is in a position where they obviously need to do something to make the platform viable. I mean, that's the entire argument that I made in that video that YouTube should charge for 4K is that the 4K users are by far the heaviest users. Um, they are, um, like, in terms of, like, placing load on the platform, and they, at that point, should be... They, they're also the most discerning users and the ones that should be most willing to pay for the, uh, the storage and especially the bandwidth costs associated with high-resolution video. Um, I, I don't consider it to be nickel and diming to expect people to um, compensate the platform and the creators for the content that they consume. No, not not really, actually. Um, so that's that's the one part where, yeah, I don't know that I can necessarily agree with Lewis 100%, but I definitely do agree that it's clear they need to do something to remain viable because neither Luke nor I has been able to figure out for all these years how any of this makes any sense. And at some point, things have to make sense. And if they don't make sense, then they go away. See Jiffy Cat, um, see Twitter, right? <laughs> like it's, it, if it's not sustainable, then it won't be sustained. Eventually. By definition, yeah, yeah exactly. And so, um, I don't know, would we, would we say that theaters are nickel and diming because they prevent people from sneaking in i mean nobody was going to sit in those seats anyway like that often that's the argument for ad blockers is i wasn't i wasn't going to pay for premium and i wasn't going to watch that or i wasn't going to buy anything anyway and it's like okay but um like that's you're the, you're you're taxing this service yeah that's the price of admission it and, costs money to give this to you 
I mean, in the case of the uh, theater, it actually like, oh, no, you, there's a marginal cost. Your HVAC has to work ever so slightly harder to account for your approximately well, 100 watts of heat. Mm. And they might have to clean up after you if you make a mess. The You're average- Technically wearing the chairs. That's true. That's true. Those chairs are actually okay. very surprisingly expensive. Um, there's also opportunity cost. Linus is wrong. 4K was a free option, then YouTube wanted to charge for it. You can't charge for something that was free previously. Well, you absolutely can. <laughs> Unquestionably, you can absolutely do that. Wow. Um, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the, I, I don't know how else to... Uh, the community might not like it. You, you will pretty much Shrek. always get negative sentiment. Uh, in response to that, but Shrek. you super definitely can do that. <laughs> hey, DLL, I've always wondered how much creative influence the editors have over videos. Is there an editing Bible that you try to follow? Thanks for all you do. If there is, I haven't seen it in a long time. Um, I think <laughs> Ed probably has some guidelines and stuff. There's definitely rules that we have overall. I mean, it's not necessarily the editors, but like I, I had to remind people recently of our policy for gross out content. Um, and I had to clarify it a little bit. We had a video recently that had someone flossing their teeth in it. And I was like, oh. hey, can I just remind you of the no gross out policy? Because I saw some comments about it. Um, ever since we did that channel super fun video that where people were eating without their hands, like SpaghettiOs off of a piece of plexiglass that had a camera under it we basically like we thought it was kind of like funny and it would look ridiculous and it was kind of funny and it did look ridiculous but it was it was unsettling and if you get even three percent of people who tune into a video immediately navigating away when something grosses them out that's going to hurt your channel's recommendation disgust or rec is a powerful emotion. yeah your recommendability and so i i sent out a little memo being like hey um no remember and i got a bit of pushback from people saying well how well where's the line you know what's what grosses out one person doesn't necessarily gross out another and so i kind of had to think of something and i basically said look if it would be if it would be considered rude in mixed company at the dinner table then it doesn't go in the video and so that's kind of our that's our that's our current line on it um so any you know biting fingernails, flossing teeth, you know, just any, basically anything where a body fluid is involved is probably over the line. Um, so there's things like that. Um, you know, there's definitely uh, guidelines we have in terms of, we never like to see just, you know, jump cuts, you know, just, just, just like crappy, you know, 2010 20, 20, era YouTube editing uh, where you just like take out every tiny gap and the, the, the host is just constantly jump cutting. Uh, I've never liked that style. So that is always supposed to be covered with B-roll or with a website capture, just anything, anything to mask a cut. Um, so there's things like that. But uh, in terms of like the content itself, I mean, that's mostly between the writing team, me, and then the editor adds their special flair. And then it gets like a final review from um, someone up high usually nick lights i think colton's been doing some of them theoretically i should be doing them but i like never get to it i'm just doing so much stuff quick question all the ltx land computers are are brought by people right we're not providing any uh as far as i know yeah cool yeah that answers the question um aggie says biting fingernails is not gross out lol um it would to, be to a considered. Lot of people it, is. it would be considered rude at a dinner table with mixed company. Yeah, so then it is. That's that's the line. <laughs> people are replying. Uh, I bite bad, and I know I'm gross. <laughs> Way to go, Bordaga. <laughs> okay, moving on. Hey, DLL, but mostly little L. In the framework factory tour, you mentioned that they assemble the DIY kits to test them. If they assemble them, how and why are they cheaper? Also, big and tall sizes win. I didn't want to say this incorrectly, but I'm pretty sure it's because the DIY editions come, the, the lowest tier comes without stuff, right? Yeah. No memory, no storage. Yeah, so then you can save a buck if you can get a good deal on some memory and storage somewhere else. So, or if you already have some. So that's really the main benefit. As for big and tall sizes, man, they're, they're, they're working on it. Um, one of our fit technicians who's been off for a while is back now, so hopefully we'll have a little bit more resources to um, to dedicate to that. You can tr We get questions about this every week. I promise you, when they happen, we will let you know on WAN Show, and I will be wearing one. 
I am very excited about that. Yeah, it'll just be tall by then, but uh, he's going to do it. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Hi, LLD. We'll be listening on Spotify on Monday. Has there ever been a time you've been tempted to stray away from the prosumer mindset LMG is known for? Pro-consumer mindset. Come on, Dan. That's a very different word. <laughs> oh, uh, pro-consumer. Um, I mean, yeah, sure. Like, I think any business that looked you in the eye or any business owner that looked you in the eye and said, I have never once been tempted to make more money in a way that uh, benefits me selfishly. Um, either is like some kind of saint or is not being honest with you. Like, remember when we... When, I think just not being honest. When we would talk about L, uh, LLTT coin or like a, yeah. a rug pull coin or like all that kind of stuff. Like it's... D- d- you know how yeah how how cool would it been would it have been to just, just like loot. make 10 million dollars yeah. by just minting it farting out some garbage yeah um and and we even like we talked about it we were like we talked about it publicly on wan show so none of this is a secret but we we talked about it we said like oh man we could even just be we could even just be totally upfront about it guys this is a rug pull so if if you're not in if you're not on if it, you right, time it right. Yeah, right when the rug gets pulled, you're gonna it's you're gonna be the one on your butt, and you know th- th- this is our cynical you know money fabrication um, endeavor. So let's go. Woo! Like we we just decided not to, and we were, were just like, like kind of gross. Ah, fine. I guess we just won't. I mean, NFTs were another example of just a way that we could have made some easy money um, instead. We did still make some easy money, but not nearly as much. And we did it by just mocking NFTs. We um, just sold pictures of potatoes. We actually sold like eight thousand dollars worth of pictures of potatoes. It's, <laughs> hey. kind of, it's kind of obscene. Let's go. Um, hey, I'm sure there's people who printed out their potato and put it on their wall. Dude, some of them. Okay, some of them were legitimately kind of cool. <laughs> the people that those potatoes, okay, were minted on you know LMG dime, and I say dime you know sort of fairly accurately it was about 22 dollars if i remember correctly yeah something like that yeah to generate uh, all... that might have actually been something else i don't remember it wasn't it, was it wasn't extremely very much. low yeah yeah if i remember correctly there's a free amount that they give you i think it's like 20 bucks allowance before it starts costing you money oh wait yeah no the 22 was for something else i'm pretty sure we didn't even breach the free allowance i think it cost us like nothing but i don't i don't really remember ghost robless on twitch says integrity is much more worth than 10 million dollars you would be surprised you'd be surprised how many people there is a massive amount of people that would disagree with that (laughs) there's a massive amount of people that would agree with that and then given the actual real opportunity in front of them actually in real life would go the other way 10 million dollars is a lot of money like there is a there is changes the life of you and everyone you know amount of money oh yeah it's crazy yeah there there is a very disappointingly large percentage of people that will verbally stand behind ideas and then the second even a single dollar comes into question they will immediately crumple those ideas like just yeah anyways we should probably move on will there be any plans to make float plane merch like luke has also when are the tech pants going on the store you can't take my shirt uh yes we have a blue blank it's a very dissimilar color to that one but it's blue oh um hmm. float plane it turns out doesn't have a pantone for its blue oh so that's inconvenient ah yeah so the design team you know hmm. put some blues in front of me and i was like that doesn't really seem like float plane and they're like well it's not and i was like what do you mean well it doesn't have one i was like what do you mean it doesn't have one what about that one and they're like yeah that's not like a real color that's just <laughs> yeah so anyway um we're working on it sweet this is pretty close how did they do this that's from american apparel so they can't print colors well, no that no aren't it's, the, it's the base like the actual shirt yeah, yeah yeah they can't create a shirt that isn't pantone well it, it's a melange I don't, I don't know how any of this stuff yeah works. no no okay yeah no all right so like there's a there's a reason people use pantone because it allows you to communicate color 
across devices, across oceans. Um, and like we could send them that shirt and be like, make this. But they actually wouldn't be able to do that, particularly because this is a melange. So first they dye the blue. What does that mean? It means it's got blue and white th- fabric in it. Look, look closely. Oh my God, your eyesight is so bad. You never noticed that's not like a uniform color? I honestly thought that was just the pilling. Because it's really old. <laughs> I also don't really care. Okay. Well, anyway, there's two different colors that are... Um, oh, I'm going to get this wrong. It's either woven or something. But they're put together. And so you, what you see is partially some, partially other as they you know, weave in back and forth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Replicating that exact look, very difficult without knowing exactly what weave and exactly what colors and ratios and blah 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 so no we have to basically do our own shirt and it's um yeah it's a, it's a lot lighter like it's fine but <laughs> jane revealed the fun secret oh what's this the shirt isn't one of the full plane colors either yeah yeah no because there isn't one so yeah it is a color that was just an american apparel shirt that we picked like yeah. it yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was whatever they had in stock because they never had anything <laughs> Hey. L plus ratio plus not a real panto. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was good. That's uh, Devin the Dev in full point chat. Sorry, go for it. No, it's great. Hey, DLL for Lime. <laughs> how's that? How's that not the best name ever for a developer? Devin the Dev. Yeah, like. Uh, hey, what are you up to? I'm just Devin. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, my best sorry. my best friend when I was growing up was named Devin and he is currently a dev. Nice. And I used to call him Dev growing up. So Nice. Yeah. Dev the Dev. It's all your fault. Yep. Hey DLL, for Lime Day, would we be able to pick up our order at LTX? No. No. <laughs> it is... sounds really complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. d- it does. <laughs> is Microsoft Projects Volterra worth buying yet? Or are there still no good consumer options for arm desktops outside of the mac bubble i'm an open source developer and i want to start porting i haven't played around with uh project volterra it appears to be a dev kit so i would say no if it's a dev kit they're literally telling you that it is not for you to buy um, I haven't seen any great options for ARM Windows PCs yet, so I'm I'm gonna go with uh, if you want something that actually like works good, then no. Linus, as a smart home user, burned by Instone, Instone. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that. Instone. It's got too many consonants. Instion. Instion. Uh, going defunct, I've recently settled on IP Wi-Fi based switches that support HomeKit as a replacement. How has your Z-Wave system issues been going? I just haven't touched it. I uh, just accept that my house is stupid, not smart, and I will deal with it when um, what's their face actually delivers Project Linus. Hi, LLD. This question is for Luke. As we know, you're a wonderful bird dad. But does your love of birds extend to bird watching as well? Mm, in a valley. Uh not with bird like, watching. Not yeah. with like intention. Like I don't go out to go bird watching. Mm. There uh, is an app that uses AI to ID birds from their sounds. That'd be pretty cool. I did want to get a uh one of those little smart bird feeder things. Um, but I have wizened in my years and it was a Kickstarter. So instead of backing it, I just favorited the page. And it's been like four years. And as far as I can tell, it does not exist. So dodged that one. Um, But yeah, I wanted like a bird feeder that would take a picture of the bird when it came to get some seed and would try to ID what type of bird it was because I thought that would just be interesting to see what's in the area. Uh, What I have found is I just kind of like (laughs) try to make friends with random birds that I find. Like when I was in Taiwan, I was stuck at like a transit station for a while. And there was some bird there and I just like talked to it because they like noise, right? So I don't know. Like if I'm coming into work and I park and I'm like walking up to the building and there's some bird there, I'll just like friendly yell at it because they like loud noises. So I'll be like, hi, bird. 
and then just walk by. I don't know. I notice them more, but no, I'm not going to go out intentionally bird watching. Hey, DLL, in the past you've said you didn't want to go into PC retail because the margins were thin on selling parts and computers. What changed to consider it with labs tested? Uh... I am considering it. Whoa. Just because I'm considering it doesn't mean that it is likely to ever happen. Um, and as for why I'm motivated to do it, it's the same reason that I'm motivated to do anything. That something sucks and I feel like I could do it better. Right now, the state of shopping for PC hardware online is deplorable. Like I said, we did that video with the budget power supply roundup. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't figure out how much it cost because everywhere it was out of stock, people don't list pricing for out of stock items anymore. Uh, when did that go out of fashion? That sucks. Okay, so I couldn't, I couldn't find any pricing for this stupid thing and I couldn't find it actually in stock at a real store anywhere. It's all just like shipped by Jimmy, Jimmy John PC Inc. Limited through New Egg. Like, I, I don't want to deal with that. I want to know, like, with some reasonable markup based on the actual cost of the item, what is this thing worth? And like, can I get it in a reasonable amount of time? So it's just the fact that it's so hard to find stuff these days that is, you know, trustworthy um, has, in, has it's inspired me. It's, it's made me think that there's a gap that didn't exist before, and, and maybe there's room for margin for a site that is trustworthy. Like, if you knew that whatever $65 or $150 power supply or whatever was the best one for that price, would you shop on that site instead? Maybe not. Maybe you would just go to that site, find out which one is the best one, and just leave and buy it somewhere else. But then you'll probably get frustrated trying to find it somewhere else with, from like a seller that's actually reputable. And maybe you'll just come back. Or maybe you'll never leave in the first place because you'll appreciate that someone's actually doing the work to curate this stuff. I think there's room for that. I don't know. Linus, would you ever consider buying EVGA, either with a partner or as an umbrella corp company run by its existing staff? No. If, uh, if I was worried about the margins in PC and like uh, in uh, computer component retail, I am even more worried about the margins in computer component um, like manufacturing. It's an extremely cutthroat business. IDLL, greetings from Taiwan. Such a shame we didn't run into you guys at Computex. Uh, what happened to the AMD GPU challenge? Switching to the 7900 XTX, and I'm having visual bugs. I'm still waiting for Luke to put it back in his computer and send his notes so we can do the third part. No one told me this. I emailed. No. I did. You didn't email me that. Mm, you emailed that. I emailed asking if you were going to do it again, and you said yes. Mine's never left my computer. Do you have notes? Yeah. Because last I heard you didn't have notes and okay. you told me you were going to do it. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so I sent a follow-up on, uh, okay, May 15th. I said, I can't play Tears of the Kingdom. I want my NVIDIA GPU back. Shared you all on my notes. Um, you said something, something. I'm pretty sure it was still occasionally snowing when I took my card out. <clears throat> I replied with, do you guys feel you have enough to say? Luke, do you want to put it back in for a week? You say... That's probably a good idea. Yeah, I'll grab one. May 17th. Yeah. So you never did it. There's an email thread after and then that. I, and then I replied, Jake, you down to compile and write this biz? He says, yeah, but probably not feasible till we're back from Computex. I say, copy that. You say, just checking. Are you guys actually doing this? I reply, yeah. Yeah, did you do it? What do you mean do it? It's still in my computer. I never removed it. Did you write the notes? Write what notes? Did I've, Jake write his notes? I shared you with my, I shared you on my notes. Did Jake write his notes? Because this is the same problem we had in the past. I installed it. I wrote all my notes. I did everything. You guys said you were going to and didn't do jack. So we're in another situation where you're saying that you're going to. I didn't have time to game. I don't care. My life is busy. That's not my problem. 
I've got as many notes as I'm going to have. It's going to be mostly based on yours and Jake's notes. Okay. Oh, my. See? Oh, my goodness. My note is that I wanted to emulate Tears of the Kingdom, and there's visual anomalies on our DNA three cards. That's my notes. <laughs> this is high school class projects all over again, says Mystical and Float Plane Chat. Well, we're just, we're, we're in the same spot that we were in before. We didn't get any further. Yeah. So now it's just on me to do the testing again. Yeah. Because I already did it, but because you didn't do it the first time. I I have gamed. I played Slapshot Rebound. Yeah. And it ran fine. Very good work. Thank you. <laughs> You're all getting to watch how uh, our production schedule works every single day. It's just it's just this for 40 hours a week. Uh, okay, up next. Love Game Linked. How did this video style come to be like with Tech Linked? The off-the-cuff style with background interjections is very engaging. Was this a specific decision? Um, I didn't care. <laughs> I was completely checked out. And so I, because I was only paid based on the video quantity that was uploaded to NCIX Tech Tips. Um, I basically stopped reviewing any scripts from the team there. Like this is a couple years into the contract with them um, when I didn't even want to renew it anyway. And so I basically said, well, I'm going to read whatever is on the prompter. And if you guys want any notes on the script, then I'm just going to be providing them live. So when you look back at old episodes and I'm just like, ah, oh, it's not a very good opening joke. And I just like make up my own on the spot. That is like actually training. <laughs> um, and then the objections that they had were because they actually wanted to reply <laughs> to my commentary on their writing <laughs> and thus a whole style was born. TechLinked was born. Uh, yeah. yeah, so then when we brought Riley in to do TechLinked instead of NetLinked, which was on the NCIX channel, we basic, I was basically just like, yeah, I love that irreverent kind of style that we developed um, unintentionally. And I, I love that kind of adversarial back and forth that we have between the off-camera writer and the, and the host. And I just, I think it's really fun and it's funny. And so we're just going to basically do what we knew, what we did together before that we know worked and was... You know, it was it was obviously like, you know, lower quality, but in a way that I, I always thought was really engaging. And so we're just going to do that. And so that's what we did. And it turns out it's really good. And um, we're going to keep doing that. <laughs> Looking for some advice. I am a content creator who has made content for the likes of Tesla and Google. The bulk of my work is stuck behind an NDA. I need to update my reel, but struggle to get gig work. Hmm. Man, that's tough. This is not advice. I would just show it to people anyway. I, but what I'm assuming is that the NDA component of it is just that you were the one who worked on it. Um, not that it's actual. Not that the content actually contains information that is bound by an NDA. But I would. I would never share it digitally. I'd just be like. Okay, like I worked on this and not let people like look at it too closely. That's, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I, if I had no portfolio as a creative, I, I'm f***ed. What do they, what do they do? Sorry, I missed the very beginning of their they message. Do, they've done, I'm a content creator who has made content for the likes of Tesla and Google, but the bulk of my work is stuck behind an NDA. I'm assuming they mean like video content or like graphic design and stuff. I'm I'm not I'm assuming they do not mean content like like engineering documents and they're struggling to get work outside of that. Yeah. This is not legal advice to be very clear. Can you I yeah, it really depends on the type of but content. But it's like it, it's that's a huge that's a huge issue, right? Like if you if you can't show anybody your portfolio um, I mean it's pretty normal for developers. Again, though, so again, my assumption initially was that this is content that will be shown somewhere at some point, but just their involvement might be under NDA. Like, I'm making a lot of assumptions here, but... Weird NDA, is it not? Not necessarily. I don't know. I guess I'd need more details. Why yeah, do it really that? depends on the type of content, I think. 
yeah, people in chat are saying like, just say you worked for Tesla and Google. Like, yeah, like you don't, you don't expect people to show you the code that they worked on at Google when you're hiring a developer. Well, no, it wouldn't be development. Yeah, but like, but they could show you the finished product. Like I worked on this. Often, no. Oh yeah, I guess There's if it's tons an internal of tool, internal it projects. Be. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fair enough. Ah, oh, yeah, that's tough. Ah, that's man. what I'm saying. Like, what kind of content is this? I don't know. See, I I have to confess, my initial reaction was it's like ads. So if it's not though, like if okay, so say for example, uh, when we were at the Intel Fab. Um, I was shown a HoloLens project that allows you to like repair the machines in the fab as someone who absolutely doesn't know anything and someone can provide like remote assistance and it's like augmented reality showing yeah, yeah. you what to do. If you created that and you like tried to show that to someone, you're obviously going to get your butt sued. So that's content, but I didn't really think about that kind of content. So you know what? I take it back. Um, you're boned. Uh, I don't really know what to tell you. Yeah. That's really tough. Yeah. Can you give more thoughts on if you're switching to iOS? I can't. I talked about it on one show last week. I had to sideload an app a little while ago, and it's like, how can I live without being able to sideload apps? That's ridiculous. I'll install whatever apps I want on my phone. It's my damn phone. So, um, no, I don't think it's happening. Good take. At least not now. It's my favorite take. Love the show. Keep it up. Any updates on the release timeline on the NAS product you are investing in? Nope. I, They're very much in stealth mode right now, but what I will say is after a recent collaboration with a content creator, they cannot come out of stealth mode soon enough for me because we ran into some stupid thing in TrueNAS with stupid sharing permissions and the interface is obtuse and it's like, the fact that they don't have a one button, like, yeah, I just want like a completely normal NAS that just has guest access in a Windows environment is absolutely mind blowing to me. Um, so I, I can't wait for these guys to just have something that is not s just stupid to use. Um, you don't need like to be an engineer to just set up a basic NAS. I think a lot more people would just, you know, grab an old computer and huck some hard drives in it if it was as easy as what they're what they're aiming to do. Okay, this is a really interesting one. Where can I learn to build infrastructure with enterprise specifications but a jank budget? We're underfunded biologists and deal with multi TB, five D, three D color plus time movies of embryos developing and brains firing. Uh, there is a massive community of, of homebrew enthusiasts. Um, there's also a, a ton of open source stuff in that space. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. if, if what you want is just sort of that reliability, um, like you, you where could, to learn it, not necessarily the name of the, I mean, level one text. Yeah. Is, might be a little deep for yeah. like the very basics. It really depends where you're starting. Yeah, I don't There's know. There's a where lot you're of starting. information here that might be lagging. I honestly would go to the forum. I can tell you that stuff's definitely out there. Like yes. you can get decommissioned servers for next to nothing that are still perfectly reliable and especially can be configured with often open source free software to be very resilient. Um, but this is like. You're answering that. Some people in chat are saying buy on eBay. They're asking where to learn. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to answer the like easy answers. Yeah, someone's saying r slash home lab. So yeah, there's there's Reddit. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly would genuinely suggest LTT forum. There are some extreme storage nerds on there. I know there's a lot of storage nerds on r slash data hoarders as well. Yeah. Um, I, it's more just like storage porn, I know, but like. Yeah. You might be able to pick up some stuff. Level one forum. Yep. Yeah. So not, not just the videos, but also the forums. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. LTT forum, level one forum. There's, there's a lot of knowledgeable people out there. And if you ask in a way that's not obnoxious, uh, you, you may get some legitimate help. Especially if you describe what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, that's, Sounds that's neat. awesome. I yeah. think everybody would pile on top of that. Yeah. 5d videos. That's awesome. Um, okay. Uh, last one I have here for curated. Hey, L L N D. I've had my LTD screwdriver for a month or so now and have never been so in love with a tool. 
can we have a reminder of the ETA for the stubby? Can't wait to add it to my toolkit. Uh, one month. Ish. 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 Vague. Okay, now let's move into potentials, I guess. You're the boss. Okay, um, I'll just start at the top. Good evening, DLL. Question for all of you. Is this where you thought you would be in your 30s, in life, work, etc.? Oh my god. Um, I never thought about being 30 someday. <laughs> now I think about being 40. 30 is like, I don't know, it's like the in-between, I guess. I don't care about the age at all. The only thing that annoys me is just how constantly broken slash tired I feel. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't even slightly care. I don't care about the age lines. I don't care about the gray bits that are showing up in my beard. I don't care about when my head hair will go gray. I don't care about getting wrinkles. Would you care about losing the head hair? No, to be honest. I could go without it. My dad's not had it the entire time I think I've been alive. I was expecting it to happen, and then I figured out that you get it from your mom's side, not your dad's side, and I was like, oh, I guess I'm good then. Um, yeah, I'm not worried about any of that stuff. I just don't like that, like, if I go do a physical activity, I'm, like, sore for a really long time. It's like, well, that, that sucks. Um, and, like, if I get sick, it feels like the recovery window is much longer. If I get injured, the recovery window seems a lot... It's getting to the point already where I feel like injuries are, like, semi-permanent. Like, if I get injured in a certain way, it's like, oh, okay. This could be it. Like, I, I hurt my thumb, like, months ago. Yep. My thumb is still in pain. As far as I can tell, my thumb is going to be in pain for the rest of my life. And it's just like, all right, like, I'm going to physio for it. I'm working on stuff. Its function is improving, but the grip in my left hand is still significantly worse than my right because of this weird thing that's going on with my thumb. And it's just like, I don't even know how it happened. Like, there's just, uh, yeah, things are just kind of, you know, falling apart. The the uh, the current status of the ship is, uh, it is not improving over time anymore, you know? Yeah. There have been a lot of fairly janky and surprisingly robust projects we've gotten the chance to see from LMG. What projects have been your favorite to film? Any projects that we never got to see? Um, man, favorites to film. Definitely a lot of the stuff at the house was a lot of fun. I always like building stuff that I know we don't have to take apart immediately after. Um, oh, something we haven't filmed yet is there's a new 1U gaming design like gaming machine design for the LAN room at the at the new house um the the labs engineers did a fantastic job of the design for this thing and we no longer need like 700 dollars each custom cases for it so uh that video is probably going to get shot in the next couple of weeks here i'm super excited oh that's what they're working on i saw that too that looks sick Hey guys, I work at Best Buy and have seen almost every ROG ally we've sold get returned. The reason seems to be buggy software and lackluster battery life. What did you guys think of it now? Really? That's kind of surprising. I guess I just knew what I was getting into, whereas the more average, typical Best Buy customer might be expecting a more cohesive Switch-like experience. I'd be interested to know if that's just something that's unique to your store. Like maybe you're in a not as, I don't know, like tech savvy area. I don't even know how to, how to generalize um, something like that. That's really interesting though. No, I think we're kind of just, relying on the rest of the community to be amazing and creative like i i i had tried to come up with some stuff when narav the ceo was here and everything i said was already being done or had already been done by someone so i was just like okay you were muted watch it yeah i know oh should i say what the question was yeah yeah actually. custom modules or customization items for the upcoming framework 16. yeah and the answer was no i'm not even going to try because you guys are collectively much more creative than i could ever be Hello, LLD. You guys are known for your tech tips, but have you made a uh, sorry? But you have made a successful business. Have you ever thought of sharing business tips or advice, or do you have good resources to share? 
uh, the, the business team has been bothering me to do a book or like a course, like a video course or something for many years. And I, I don't know, there's some stuff that I could talk about, but realistically, I think the vast majority of anything I could possibly write would be in a WAN show somewhere already anyway. Like I, I'm a pretty open book with you guys for better or for yeah. worse sometimes. And yeah. <laughs> we're going to take the extra on the shipping. <laughs> what? I got to eat. <sighs> Dan's got to eat. The, the book, the it book. Pays, your shipping, your shipping pays for my food. <laughs> The book's pretty open. <laughs> I don't think it has a spine. It's just pages. <laughs> Linus, take on lots of debt so you feel pressured to work hard. Get lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, DLL, this question is for Linus. I'm a new father, and I worry about responsibility introducing my son to tech. Where do I draw the line between protecting and sheltering? I don't know. Sometimes I feel like my kids are not protected enough and other times I feel like they're too sheltered. I think um, the best thing if you're a parent is to know you're going to get it wrong and just try to get it a little more right next time. And if you do that for 18 years, then hopefully they'll be functional adults. But if the general population is anything to go by, they probably won't be. So don't feel too bad. Hi, LLD. Have you guys received any feedback from Microsoft regarding the Windows sleep issue on laptops where it would drain all the battery? No, not that I'm aware of. Good question, though. Hey, Dan and the talent, what's the craziest thing you've gotten to do through YouTube that you would never have guessed you'd do? Go to NASA? So sick. Definitely the Intel fab. That was so on my bucket sick. list. That's so sick, too. I vaguely remember a WAN show where Linus mentioned an LTT desk that they couldn't figure out how to stock and distribute. If such a thing exists, what about releasing the plans for a fee, even? The problem is that the plans for it are, like, rudimentary and only good enough for us to use as a reference to do something that is pretty much in our mind. So I don't think we're going to be releasing those because they're not in a usable state. Um, as for whether we would ever do a desk, I think we'd need to find the right partner for manufacturing and distribution. It's not something that we would want to figure out on our own. It's definitely appealing. Like there's good margin in it, good ASPs. Um, I think that it's a market that is not actually very well addressed, you know, in terms of building something that's both quality and uh, really functional. But um, no, we're in no hurry. To, to get that going anytime soon. Hello, future me. Linus, I want to start a company. Quality appliances that don't suck is one of the many ideas I've had, but I don't know where to start. Any tips? Start with something much smaller than an appliance. I think that's the best thing. Find something that you, you know, you think you can really add something to that's simple. I mean, it took us three years to build a screwdriver and that's not because we're idiots. Um, it's because to build something quality is way harder than just shipping something. Um, so I would say start really small and, um, you know, don't overextend your finances. Those are probably the best bits of advice that I can give you if you're trying to start a business from scratch. Hey, LLD, can I get a hot take on the printer industry? From overpriced ink to mandatory software downloads and more, framework printer. I don't even think it's a hot take to say that the printer industry is a giant steaming pile of garbage. Um, I think we're at, I think we actually bought like fifteen printers and we're working on like a like a which printer is the least horrible video. <laughs> oh, is that but what I, that shelf? Is? I think it's been stalled for quite some time though. Yeah, I can see that. And last of my curated, I have here. What is the lab's purchase that got you the most excited? P.S. I brought my LTT backpack to the South Pole, but due to NSF rules, couldn't get any good pictures to share. Um, all right. Well, that's cool. Um, <laughs> I'd say the most exciting purchase, it's kind of irrational. It's like so nerdy, right? But um, I really was excited about the power supply tester. Um, most excited, though. I mean, the robot's really cool. Maybe, maybe the theater room. 
I think because we're going to use the theater room for all our display testing and it's going to be like designed for for viewing displays in their the most optimal conditions. I think that that's going to be amazing because as much as I love the setup I have at home, I imagine some stuff is going to roll through the lab that is way beyond what I would consider to be practical or even affordable, depending on what we can get our hands on. And so I think there's going to be some experiences to have in there. Okay, two more here in incoming. Hey, from the UK, watching live. You must be running late. Is there any chance of women's hoodies? Oh, yes, there's a chance. That's good enough for me. And uh, the last one I have for today, any chance of getting merch message transcripts after streams? So many interesting questions get answered, but I can't split my attention between the video and messages. Would love to read them later. No, probably not. Uh, we have thought about potentially having it email um, the question asker the response. Uh, that might be something that we implement later, but not right now. And I think Linus is replying to the last one. Boom, That's got him. That's all I got for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you all again next time. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. We're going to end up doing WAN show for long enough that uh, nobody is even going to understand what reference that is anymore at some point. God willing. Then again, you and I are both in a race to die, so... <laughs> I will be really interested to see what happens to the channel now that this stream is over.